Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, and in today's episode, I want to do something that I've been seeing people post a lot more of lately. These are essentially tours of people's movie libraries, physical media specifically, and uh, these are some videos I've been watching. Now, a lot of my collection is digital. We're not going to go into my digital library. I don't really see any point of that exactly. So, you know, I've put together a list myself of movies that I've watched people uh, go through their library, and you know, I've noted down the movies that stood out to me, movies that I want to check out, but I do hope you get to discover some films maybe you've never even heard of before. So let's just go ahead and first take a look at what I've got in my media closet. Okay, so this is the main living area where I do most of my movie watching, and then right next to the TV we have this closet where I store everything. Up top we kind of have the bigger uh, box sets, just the fancier collectible stuff, and as we move down then we just have more traditional 4K and Blu-rays. Got some other box sets spread out in the mix there too. Get into the television section and then a separate uh, criterion section at the bottom and DVDs on the very last shelf. And now that you've seen how I've got my movies laid out, we're just gonna start going through them shelf by shelf, starting with what we had at the very top, which were uh, kind of just box sets, cool collectible items. Starting here with Stranger Things season one. It was really cool when they first put this out in this uh, collectible uh, VHS style uh, packaging. This was a Target exclusive, I believe. And, um, you know, nothing too fancy beyond the VHS, uh, you know, packaging here. But it came with a poster and, and there's even DVDs in here in addition to the Blu-rays, which I guess is nice. Um, but no special features, unfortunately. So all you really have here, uh, the only reason you would buy it is for this collectible VHS packaging, which is a really cool, I think, idea. Again, I think this was a Target exclusive and they released uh, season two on 4K. Um, and season three hasn't come out on physical media as far as I know yet. Here is one that I, uh, I like a lot. I mean, definitely one of my favorite shows, uh, Breaking Bad release in this limited edition uh, barrel here. And so um, I can't even remember how this thing opens. Uh, it's got like a bonus disc on the top, comes with something that I probably won't open. Uh, it has this coin, I forget what this is called. There's a term for this type of coin. And um, then there's like this, uh, it looks like money on the top. So when you open the barrel, it looks like a barrel full of money, which is cool. But inside there's a, an apron for cooking. I'm not much of a cook, I don't go out uh, and grill or anything like that, but would be cool to use that uh, if you were a grill master. And as far as opening this, um, you know, this is where cool packaging kind of becomes complicated because it's not always uh, the easiest to manage, but it opens up like this. And I just thought this was a really unique way of packaging uh, discs. Um, they put them in these uh, kind of magnet, magnetized glass trays. They almost look like coasters and um, yeah, these little magnets just hold it closed. And again, not super user friendly, but you open it up and you can take the disc out and then put the magnet back on. Um, yeah, so not super user friendly if you're gonna be going into it a lot, but I'm a sucker for these kind of uh, limited edition sets. And for one of my favorite shows, absolutely had to have it. So Breaking Bad for you there. And then related to Breaking Bad, we have uh, El Camino, which was released on this limited edition steelbook on Blu-ray. Um, also has a DVD. Uh, very interesting to see that they're still packaging DVDs with some of these more recent releases. But I guess that's fine for people that might still uh, have a DVD player and not have upgraded to Blu-ray yet. Um, this would normally be something I would have lower in the shelf next to other movies. Uh, so there's two reasons I put it next to the Breaking Bad set. First being that it's related. It's a uh, you know, it's a continuation of the Breaking Bad story for one of the characters, if you haven't seen it. And um, the other reason is that on the side here of the steelbook, uh, on the spine here, where you would normally see the title of the movie, so that when you have it on the shelf, you know what you're looking at. There's nothing. It's just black. This is still sealed, by the way. I haven't opened it or watched it. You know, this is a movie that appeared on Netflix, um, so I've already seen it um, and, you know, just bought this because of the cool packaging. But yeah, there's no uh, indication of what it is on the spine. So if you have it on your shelf, uh, you wouldn't necessarily know unless you just remembered that, oh yeah, the black empty spine, that's El Camino. So I decided to put it up on the top shelf next to the Breaking Bad set. So um, let's just skip ahead to what we had on the, the top right, which is this big old Star Trek uh, set. So this is the original 
um, there's several things in here. Um, it's the original, well, no, I guess it is just the original crew, starting with the show. So you have the three seasons of the original Star Trek show, and um, then the six films. So it has this little slip cover on the top, something on the back that just shows all the contents, I suppose. Then when we get into the actual box here, how does it come out? Oh yeah, you see when you have fancy packaging like this, you don't really, at least I don't, bust these out very often to watch. I've seen the show a couple times already. So you have uh, the original series um, in this big old digipack, or not digipack, I forget what they call these, like these big old plastic cases. Um, it contains the three seasons of the original Star Trek series, and then you've got a, a Blu-ray pack of the six films, um, including the director's cut of The Wrath of Khan, I believe, which I still haven't watched. I don't think it's really much different. I think it adds like a total of one scene. Could be wrong about that, but um, it includes all six films of the original Star Trek crew, and then uh, in the back here is kind of torn and damaged, but it's holding this uh, 50th anniversary pin. So it was 50th anniversary a few years ago, um, and I always wanted to buy this set, but it was too expensive at the time, and it went on sale, I guess, last year maybe, like under 100 bucks. so I just had to spring for it. So, related to Star Trek, I have this... Uh, it looks like it's just, you know, a replica of the Enterprise, but it actually functionally holds discs inside. Um, and so this is uh, the design of this ship. You know, if you're a Trek purist, I don't know if there's actually, I'm not that nerdy <laughs> of, a, of a Trek fan. I mean, I like the shows a lot, but uh, this is like the design of like the 2009 and newer Star Trek films. So this is uh, that uh, style of the ship and if you take off this top part of the saucer section you get it holds two discs inside and I think that's so cool so this actually these are DVDs of the 2009 Star Trek film again I have no reason to uh, watch the DVD discs um, but I just thought this replica was so cool because it's not just um, you know a replica of the Enterprise but it actually holds discs inside so I thought that was really neat and uh, that concludes the top shelf. Let's move down to actually getting into the movies, which are going to be alphabetical. Uh, beginning with perhaps not a strong movie at the gate, but uh, you know, let me explain. Uh, 13 Hours, it's a Michael Bay film. I'm not a Michael Bay fan, but uh, somehow, uh, you know, I just heard that it was a pretty good movie for his standards. So a film like The Island, you know, he just has like two or three movies that kind of stand out from his normal big explosions, dumb actions kind of movie. And this is definitely one of those films. You wouldn't necessarily know that he made it uh, otherwise. And it's, a, it's based on a true story. It's about the attacks on the embassy in Benghazi. And um, so if you like military films, uh, this is a pretty solid uh, film. And uh, you know, it, it gave me, there's a point in the film where I just like really felt the tension of the moment. And any movie that can do that for me, um, you know, that's a very respectable thing in my opinion. And so, yeah, it's a Michael Bay movie, but uh, uh, it's actually pretty good. If you like a film like Black Hawk Down, which we're going to see here in a little bit, check out 13 Hours. So next up, a more respectable collection of films, let's say, is uh, the Alien Anthology on Blu-ray. Um, I still have it kind of sealed just to kind of protect this uh, cool reflective um, outer packaging. Um, but I have watched all these films multiple times. The first two are, of course, the best. The third one is an interesting disaster, or depending how you look at it. Some people say the making of the film, the story of behind the scenes of how it came together is more interesting than the film itself. But I actually kind of enjoy it. And then you have uh, the fourth film, Alien Resurrection, which to me is, is my least favorite of the bunch. Perhaps some people like it more than Alien 3, but for me personally, uh, Resurrection is the least interesting of this pack. I'm really hoping they release this soon on 4K. I'm sure it's going to come. I think we already have the original Alien on 4K, so hopefully that box set is going to come out soon. Up next, we have American Psycho. This was a film I used to own uh, on DVD really early when I started collecting DVDs. It was, it was a, a cover, the same cover art. It always caught my attention, and I was like, oh, that's Christian Bale from the Batman movies. Um, why is he this dude holding a knife? Seems like a different role for him. And indeed it is very different than him playing Batman and Bruce Wayne. Uh, if you haven't seen the movie before, I don't really know how to describe it to you. Uh, it's not a general crowd pleaser. A lot of people may not like it. 
Um, which is kind of like, you know, a psychopath uh, character and going into the mind of that character. So it has a 4K release, looks the best that ever has. Um, check it out if maybe you've heard of it. If you haven't, I would say proceed with caution. It's definitely not for everybody. Um, up next, we have Annihilation on 4K. And this is the film I saw in the theater. I really enjoyed it. I like this director. He did um, the film before this was, well, I can't remember if he directed Dread or not. So maybe Dread was before this, and that's going to come up in the collection. But the Ex Machina was the first film that I associated with him as a director. He also wrote some stuff before that even. Uh, Alex Garland, I believe, is the director's name. Anyway, I enjoyed Annihilation quite a bit in the theater. Really weird uh, third act. Um, probably going to lose some people there. But uh, got to put this down next to The Revenant as one of the scariest uh, scenes in a film uh, featuring a bear. So... Let that be a little teaser for you. Here we have this really cool set uh, of uh, Apocalypse Now, which is a film I actually like. Uh, it's one of those films that's considered a classic. There's a lot of films like that where people, you know, uh, you know, in the modern age, go view these films from the 70s or whatever. And you know, so depending on what type of films you like, you may not enjoy this. It's very long. There's a, this is called the Final Cut, but it also has like the original theatrical cut, the Redux cut, and the Final Cut, which I haven't actually watched yet. I'm, I doubt it can be better than the original theatrical, but the director, Francis Ford Coppola, keeps trying to uh, fine tune it. Um, I enjoy the film for what it is, the Vietnam War film, and uh, this 4K set uh, is some pretty lavish packaging. And this thing was on sale. Oh, I guess I've got this J card stuck to the back. I do all these things to kind of try to protect, keep things from getting damaged on the shelf. But I mean, you can just see how many discs there are in here of all the different versions and bonus features. Some of them have cover art, some of them are ugly gray, kind of a strange packaging, a mishmash there. Um, but this was on sale for 10 bucks on uh, Black Friday of 2019, I guess, probably. 2020, kind of like the year that everyone's going to forget, right? I sure hope so. Um, yeah, so 10 bucks for this on 4K. Had to get it. I only owned it on DVD previously, which I guess we'll actually see once we get to the DVD section. Um, oh boy. Hopefully don't drop any movies here. Um, here's a film that you've either seen it or you haven't. Apollo 13. If you know the story of this mission, then you know how it ends. Um, but for movies where you know how it ends, let's say like, you know, like Titanic or something, for a film where you know the outcome, um, you know, a very good group of actors playing very interesting characters and still an entertaining film that despite knowing the outcome, possibly knowing the outcome, depending on if you do or not, uh, of the events as they happened, uh, it still manages to, uh, to kind of like have that intensity. So minor classic right here, Ron Howard film, I believe. And uh, yeah, it's a good solid flick, get it on 4K. So normally I would mention, you know, kind of this channel is a lot about streaming things. This is too many movies for me to track down and see where you can stream where. So most videos I'm gonna talk about where you can stream things. Today is not the day for me to try to keep track of where all these are streaming online. Um, this is a film I really enjoyed a lot, Baby Driver, um, from director Edgar Wright, I believe is his name. Yes, um, he's done a bunch of films that people really enjoy, from uh, Shaun of the Dead, Scott Pilgrim, Hot Fuzz. Um, and this is, uh, you know, a little bit outside of what I'd seen him do before, uh, but a really fun film. Um, hard to describe, very based on music. Um, with this guy who drives around, and he's usually got his, his uh, headphones in and um, listening to music while he you know, drives these criminals around. I found it really interesting, saw it in the theater, bought it on 4K, but as you might be able to see, haven't opened it and watched it yet, but um, have seen it before. Just need to watch it at home. Here's a set that uh, came out recently, Back to the Future Trilogy. Um, I still have it kind of sealed as far as the packaging, you know, keeping the outside safe. And then it has this uh, digibook layout. A lot of discs because we have the Blu-rays as well as the 4K discs. And I'm not a big fan of this packaging because it's hard to get the discs out. And when I do, I'm always worried I'm going to uh, damage them in some way. Um, and I haven't actually watched these since I bought them. I do need to check it out though. You know, I've seen the films a lot of times. You know, the first one's a classic. The second one, um, I actually enjoy quite a bit once we get into the movie. The, the beginning part is kind of wonky for me. And then the third one I actually quite like. Um, some people seem to hate the third one. Um, but yeah, I need to check this out in 4K because on Blu-ray, they didn't look great. 
Moving on. Oh boy, here we go. So here's the great thing about watching videos like this, in my opinion. I like, you know, everyone's gonna have Back to the Future, but not everyone's going to have the Basket Case trilogy. So for me, um, and I haven't really kept track, but uh, I assume in my collection it's majority horror. I mean, I kind of consider horror to be my favorite genre. Um, Basket Case trilogy, uh, you know, I didn't really even know it was a trilogy. I'd always heard of the first film. And this is probably one of the most recent purchases I've made. Um, it has the little UK logo, rating logo, but this is actually a region free release. So if you can find this um, on eBay or whatever, I think I got on eBay, it will play in a US uh, Blu-ray player, just FYI. So even though it has this here, it, it, it will play fine uh, on any region player, I believe. And so, yeah, this is, it's, it's hard to describe this collection of movies. Um, the first one is a guy that is carrying around what appears to be a creature in a basket and that creature kills people and there's a reason why that's happening i don't know <laughs> and then the sequels uh continue that story somewhat it's a really interesting collection of films but i actually i actually enjoyed it quite a bit definitely not for everybody moving on um here's one that is not opened but that i have seen before uh lucio fulci's the beyond this set is uh, supposed to glow in the dark. I never actually tested, you know, it's never seen enough daylight to probably actually glow. Um, but yeah, this really cool packaging. Again, for me, collecting uh, physical media, a big part of that is uh, gathering things that have some kind of cool uh, physical element to them. So uh, yeah, it's got a nice little slip case in there and I just, I just haven't opened it to watch the film. If you're a Lucio Fulci fan, this is generally considered sometimes to be his best film. That uh, next to zombie, um, Sometimes House by the Cemetery. That's another film that people seem to like of his. Just a trippy movie. Um, not everyone's taste, for sure. Getting back to more mainstream films and back to military stuff. Black Hawk Down, one of Ridley Scott's best films and just uh, one of the best military uh, films, probably. It was released on 4K a couple years ago. I think that same Black Friday sale where I got it for 10 bucks. Might have been a little bit more. I can't remember exactly. Anyway. Just a simple 4K release of a, a really solid film. If you haven't seen it before, very similar, just a military personnel in a very intense uh, situation. But again, based on a true story. Oh, I'm gonna have to organize these better. As I go through this, I'm gonna figure out the best way to work the system out. Here's a more recent film, Black Klansman. I think I just bought this on 4K. It was like on sale. One of the first 4K discs I bought, actually. And, you know, I was like, I like Spike Lee. You know, I haven't seen most of his movies, but the ones I have seen, I generally like. And it was getting a lot of buzz, and uh, it was on sale. So I picked it up. It's pretty good. I like the story, <laughs> the, the true story this is based on more than perhaps the film version of it. I would love to see a documentary of this where a black police officer goes undercover um uh well he doesn't go undercover uh, obviously but uh, a friend of his who's jewish or a partner of his goes undercover with the kkk and it's all like this thing on the kkk um but he does speak to david duke uh, the head of the kkk or of this chapter um and he can't tell that he's black by his voice. It's just interesting. It's a, it's, it's a very Spike Lee movie and uh, a very interesting story. Again, it's a good movie, uh, but I would be really more interested to know the true story and the real characters involved. Blade Runner 2049. I like the original Blade Runner quite a bit. Um, it's one of those films that you don't like necessarily enjoy it, but you just like kind of marvel at uh, just the the quality of film it is just like it just has this sense uh kind of like apocalypse now it's just so visually captivating that it doesn't even matter that it's long and has stretches that are kind of uninteresting it's just a beautiful film that's the original blade runner this is the much removed sequel also very visually beautiful um also very long um more modern audiences will probably prefer this film um i think for a sequel to a film that, I don't know, what are these, like 30 years apart or something? Um, very worthy follow-up. And you get Harrison Ford back. Uh, he was in the original, if you haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, good film and a very good 4K presentation. 
here's a set of uh, Blu-rays, and on the side it says Blancamp with a three next to it, I guess indicating three films, by the director Neil Blancamp, South African director. First uh, hit the scene with District 9, which I loved when I saw it, when it came out. Since then, he did Elysium and Chappie. This is his most recent film, and I think he actually just dropped a trailer for a new film he's going to do. It's been several years since he's actually released a film theatrically. He's been doing short films and stuff in the meantime. But this is a really cool set, um, and I think this was like 10 bucks. Not on Black Friday, but just normally priced at Best Buy one day, so I picked it up. I wish these things went in order. Of course, they have Chappie first, because that's the most recent, but that's confusing to me. Uh, I can't rearrange the discs, though, because there's these uh, pages that have to do with the films. And then it jumps to Elysium, which is the second film he did. And then it works its way to District 9 at the end. Um, but yeah, I like this little digibook packaging. Um, and I do like, I do generally like all three films. District 9, I think, is his best. Elysium is a great concept, perhaps not executed quite perfectly. And Chappie had its moments. Um, so I don't hate any of those movies, but, you know, they kind of descend in quality, I would say, as it goes along. Braveheart, movie that people always talked about and took me a long time to finally see. So if you're one of those people and you like... Um, is it medieval? I don't know if this is the correct time period, but you know, if you like uh, kind of older war films where people are not fighting with guns and tanks, but fighting with clubs and spears and swords, Braveheart might be the movie for you. Just an epic film uh, directed by Mel Gibson and starring Mel Gibson. It says uh, it won Best Picture, and I think it actually went up against Apollo 13 for Best Picture that year, and Apollo 13 was favored to win and Braveheart was kind of the surprise win for that uh, Oscar, at least. So, has a nice 4K release. Looks really good in 4K. Has a great score. That might be the best thing about it, in my opinion. Casino. 4K release. Um, has not been opened yet. I bought this somewhat recently, because it finally went on sale. But I've seen this movie several times. I'm a big Scorsese fan. Um, is this movie better than Goodfellas? Probably not but I think it unfairly gets compared to that film, and it really shouldn't be, just because it has De Niro and Joe Pesci, and you know might have some other actors that are the same too between the two films. They're just different films. Um, you know, this takes place in Vegas. Uh, it's just a completely different feel in a different location. Um, I enjoy Casino for what it is. Looking forward to seeing it in 4K. It probably has a lot more potential to shine on the format uh, because of the Vegas setting, where Goodfellas has always been more drab and I don't even, it has a 4K release, but I haven't heard that it looks spectacular, so I haven't bought it. Here is a film called The Changeling. So this will be a film that is perhaps a little less known. I certainly hadn't seen it until recently, but I had heard about it a lot. Um, and I don't know if this shows up on camera very well. This has got to be one of the darkest slipcovers I've ever seen as far as like the design. Like when it's not in direct light, it's actually like very hard to see. Um, somewhat difficult to see, let's say. Uh, but yeah, it does look like it's sealed, but I have opened it. Um, it's an 80s film starring George C. Scott. Um, looks like it's a region-free release, so you can buy it and play it in other territories. This is just a Blu-ray, though, released by Severn Films. I'm saying everything except what the movie's about. Um, it's like a haunted house movie. Um, so put it in uh, the category of, if you, if you enjoy older films, older haunted house movies, you know, it's definitely uh, inspired by films like the original The Haunting or Legend of Hell House. If you like those movies, you'll probably like this movie. You know, it's got the whole seance and trying to figure out who's in the house, the evil spirit kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, just a movie that I hadn't seen and uh, finally got to check it out. And I enjoyed it quite a bit. This film, Christine, Stephen King book, John Carpenter film. So uh, John Carpenter is definitely one of my favorite directors, uh, not really working anymore, but a lot of his films are among my favorites. I usually say The Thing is my very favorite film of all time. Christine, uh, I would say is one of the better John Carpenter films, but not in the top. Uh, but this was a film I discovered years ago, watched on DVD for the first time. I think I used to own the DVD. And 
it's just really easy to like it. I mean, it's a car that kind of has a soul or comes to life and kills people. I guess it's a spirit. There's a spirit in there, <laughs> an evil spirit. And um, for a movie about that, it's a lot better than it should be. Uh, I've been reading Stephen King more lately, so I might want to check out the book. I wonder, or I wonder how it compares to the film adaptation. This film, also a very recent purchase for me. It's a 4K release. It's called Cinema Paradiso. And this is one of those movies that is a love letter to movies. It's a movie about movies, specifically about a projectionist in a theater um, and this boy who he's kind of teaching and mentoring um, how to run a projector in a theater. There's obviously a lot more about it than just that. Um, but yeah, I'd never seen it before. It was a blind buy for me, and I found it really sweet, I think is the word that describes this the best. It didn't become like one of my favorite films. It's perhaps even a little too sentimental, but uh, it was really sweet and um, touched on the emotions in you know just the right way and perhaps going a little too sentimental at times. Um, one of those movies, though, that if you haven't seen it, I would encourage you to check it out. This film, Close Encounters, one of my favorite Steven Spielberg movies, but one of those movies that people don't ever really seem to talk about that much with him. Um, or, 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 you know, the general public doesn't even almost seem to know exists. You just, like, go from Jaws and just, like, straight to E.T. after that, and people forget about this movie in between. Um, I think this is the only film that he actually wrote um, himself as well. Could be wrong about that. But this is the Blu-ray set. It has been released on 4K, but I don't know if I'll ever get rid of this Blu-ray set. It's just such a nice little package. Um, again, I'm a sucker for good packaging. Um, comes with a pretty thick booklet full of stuff. And I don't know, just like really good uh, packaging design uh, throughout. It has two versions of the film, I believe, or maybe even three. And I always forget which one is the one I like the most. Um, I think there's a theatrical version, obviously. Then there's like a director's cut. And then there's like a special edition, maybe. I'm not going to spend too much time going through this because I don't want this video to last forever. But there definitely is a version of this that I like the most. And it's definitely not the one where you get to see uh, inside the spaceship at the end. Spoiler, there's a spaceship. Um, but, you know, this is like what led up to E.T. So if you liked E.T., and you like Jaws, this is kind of like right in the middle of those two. Uh, I like it quite a bit. Here's an interesting collection. Um, interesting mainly in that it's a, it's a steelbook, but I haven't been able to find this again in steelbook form. So I don't know if this is like some super rare thing. I don't know. <laughs> I could probably sell it for more than I bought it for, but I probably won't because I really like it. Um, it's got it's called the Ultimate Leica Collection. So Leica is the, the production company that made, well, these films but and more since then. But starting with Coraline was their big hit. And I don't know if this is the order it goes. Is Paranorman maybe was the next one they did? Box Trolls and then Kubo and the Two Strings. So yeah, they're all in this steelbook, all on their own disc. No cover art, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I think I got this for maybe like 25 bucks. And it's a steelbook. So four films in a steelbook on Blu-ray high def. Uh, and some decent films. I say decent because uh, I think when I bought this I'd only seen Coraline and I like Coraline a lot. All of these movies are kind of that stop-motion technology animation and I think Paranorman I liked. Box Trolls I don't remember so that's not a good sign and then Kubo and the Two Strings was uh, visually very impressive. I don't remember a lot about the story um, but yeah nice solid collection here from Leica. Since then, they've done probably like three or four more films, uh, none of which I've seen, I guess. Crouching Tiger. Thought I heard a loose disc in there. I think it's just a paper insert. Um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. On 4K, um, you're either going to love this movie or not love it so much. Uh, and I don't even know the history of these type of films, these Asian Martial art films, I'm sure there's a category, a genre that they belong to, a subgenre that I'm not familiar with. Either way, I do enjoy this film. I saw it when it came out and didn't really get it because I was probably too young. And uh, as I gotten older, I appreciate it more. And when it came out in 4K, I decided to buy it. Good 4K release. Here's a uh, 
film that I used to see as a little kid and it scared me, The Dark Crystal, Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal. And uh, yeah, it's pretty dark subject matter. It seemed kind of aimed at kids, which is why I guess I was watching it as a preteen or even younger. I don't remember when I first saw this, but I remember some of the characters scared me in it. But this is the 4K Steelbook release. It's got some cool art on the back. Um, you're gonna see a bunch of Steelbooks. I like Steelbook packaging. Um, but if you haven't seen the film, uh, I'd recommend it. Not gonna be everyone's taste. Even I don't like it a ton, but I do appreciate the puppetry and that's what you get with these Jim Henson movies. Um, and uh, the puppet performances are you know, just really great. And they did a Netflix series, I think. It wasn't just a movie, it was like a series that tried to follow up on this and I don't know that it went too well because I don't think it got a season after that. But anyway, that's the movie that was based off of, if you saw the next Netflix series. Dark Knight Trilogy, um, it's not opened, but I mean, I have seen these films before, and uh, this is, they're good movies. I feel like people overhype these a lot, and, and I don't get it. Um, they're good movies, and <laughs> I remember seeing The Dark Knight in theater, and being like, wow, everyone said this was like the greatest movie. And it was in theaters for like three months. And I didn't see it until like three months into its theatrical run. It was still playing. And I think the hype just uh, ruined it for me. So depending on where you stand on these films, uh, I haven't watched them in 4K yet. But I do like this little uh, simple box set to collect all three films. And uh, my favorite is probably Batman Begins, honestly. The Dark Knight is... Uh, I mean, the Joker is great in it. Two-Face, not so much. I don't know. It's a mixed bag for me. And The Dark Knight Rises is, uh, is okay, too. But, you know, it's just one of those movies that I feel like collection of films that you need to own. They are good movies, just not the greatest. Some people think they're just like the best movies ever. All right, here's a film that probably no one's going to know about. I certainly didn't. So I think I saw a review of this 4K set, and I was like, what movie is that? It's called Deadly Games, Dial Code Santa Claus. And I heard, from what I read in that review, it said it was kind of like, kind of like Home Alone, uh, and that it inspired Home Alone, and that Home Alone kind of ripped it off or something. I wouldn't say that's the case, uh, although they do share some similarities as far as a kid left at home and someone trying to break in and do him harm, and he sets kind of traps and stuff. Unfortunately, this film doesn't dwell on the traps as much as Home Alone does, so even though I enjoyed the film, I do wish we got to see some of the trap action more. Um, but yeah, the way I actually wind up seeing it is after I read that review, there's a theater chain called the Alamo Draft House, which I think is national, but it's based out of Austin, where I live, and so I went to go see it um, at... Uh, some screening, I forget, there was a theme of why this was playing, and it was just one of those movies that I had a gift card, I went to go see it, and what a, what a surprise. <laughs> I don't know, this isn't gonna be everyone's cup of tea, um, but if you wanna see a French movie about an evil Santa Claus and a kid who's like a, you know, kid Rambo trying to defend himself against this intruder, that's the film for you, I guess. All right, now this one, y'all. Die Hard. I don't know what to say about this movie. I mean, if you haven't seen it, if you're watching me now and you haven't seen this movie, then there's a problem. I mean, this is the movie that made Bruce Willis an action star. Um, it's just a great action movie, like a classic action film, and I'm not even that into action movies. This movie's great. The sequels, whatever. But this one, you gotta see this one. You just, you just have to see it. And it's on 4K. Never looked great on Blu-ray doesn't look exceptional in 4K, but it's a, definitely a welcome improvement visually. Here's a really new one. Uh, Donnie Darko on 4K. This is the Arrow release. Came in a fancy box set that I already sold. I don't need the fancy box and the posters and the lobby cards. Just this. And Donnie Darko is a movie I've owned on DVD and Blu-ray. And now 4K. And what's nice about this set is, uh, well, I guess on the Blu-ray you got both cuts. There's a theatrical and there's a director's cut. There's some drama going on around this release. Some players don't play uh, one disc or the other 
from this set. There's, there's like a stuttering or some kind of playback issue that a lot of people are having. Fortunately, on my LG player, it's the LG UBK80, but I think the, all the LG 4K players should play this fine. For the movie itself, it's a, it's a trip. I mean, this is a movie that I saw, you know, in middle school probably, or not middle school, junior high probably, like right before high school. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't understand what it was about when the director's cut came out. It kind of spoon feeds you some more information. Some people don't like that. I enjoyed it uh, because I did like all that extra information to help me kind of understand the themes and what the movie was going for. But with a set like this, you get both cuts and choose for yourself which one you prefer. Here's one that, uh, another Spike Lee movie. So we had Black Klansman earlier. This is like one of his first movies, his first big film, uh, Do the Right Thing. Released on 4K in uh, the Steelbook, limited Steelbook packaging. There's also a standard 4K release if you want to just get that. And um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's a tense movie. <laughs> His movies uh, delve into real serious issues, uh, but, but it's a fun movie uh, in parts. It, it's funny at times, and um, you know, it's really hot right now in Texas and also other parts of the country. So this is the last movie I'd probably put in my player right now uh, because the environment in this film is also very hot temperature wise. It takes place over like a hot summer, like a heat wave, much like what we're experiencing now across the country. Uh, but yeah, got this 4K release of Do the Right Thing. The Exorcist. Another one of those movies that you just got to see it, right? Like you see it at least one time if you don't like it, whatever, but you're definitely going to be impacted by it. Um, there's two cuts of this, two versions, extended director's cut and the original theatrical. I usually just stick with the theatrical version, but you do get that cool, I think they call it like the spider walk or something where she goes down the stairs uh, backwards uh, on her back, you know? Um, <laughs> it, creepy stuff. There's some creepy uh, moments in this film, some standout moments that no matter who you are, uh, you probably won't forget at least one or two things that happen in this film. Just a classic horror film uh, from the 70s, so it's going to have that 70s feel, but a very good film. A movie that, you know, we'll probably see on 4K sometime soon. Okay, here's that movie I was referencing earlier. Um, yeah, from uh, the same director, Alex Garland, I think is his name. I don't see it on the back, but I'm just going to go with that. Uh, this might have been his directorial debut, Ex Machina. This is probably the cheapest 4K disc I've ever seen. Unfortunately, I bought it early on when it was released, and um, you know it, it wasn't super expensive. But I've seen it like as low as like seven dollars. Uh, so yeah, this is the 4K release, and um, it's just a sci-fi film, trippy sci-fi movie. Um, I say trippy; it's not trippy. It's just uh, it's uh, it's shocking in several ways. Um, you know, there's not so much like too much I can say about it, but. The sci-fi theme, which is something that Alex Garland uh, likes to dwell on a lot. Again, this is the same guy that did Annihilation. And um, yeah, it's like how human can you make artificial intelligence um, and, you know, robotics and like that kind of stuff. Uh, Asked a lot of interesting questions. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Here's a steelbook release of Fargo, the movie, not the show. This is, I assume, what the show is based off of. I've never seen the television show, but this is the Coen Brothers film. I used to own this on DVD. They released it in this cool uh, steelbook. I don't know, it's not that cool. Kind of standard inside art, and it's black on the outside and shows all sorts of fingerprints, so I'm trying to barely touch it. But this is a good, uh, this is a good uh, Coen Brothers movie. If you're a Coen Brothers fan, um, if you are a Coen Brothers fan, um, it's a, it's a, you know, kind of got their weird sense of humor while also being deadly serious at times. And interestingly starts with some text that says that the movie is based on true events, but it's not. They just, they just said that for some reason, you know, just to make you think it was real. Um, let's see. A Few Good Men, 4K release, um, Rob Reiner film. Yeah, Rob Reiner, and um, based on a stage play. So as a film adaptation, you're kind of stuck in, it's a courtroom drama, so not a lot of different locations, deals with the military and um, an investigation. I'm probably not making it sound that interesting, but it's just one of those kind of classic courtroom drama films 
a relatively young Tom Cruise, um, Demi Moore's in it, and um, Jack Nicholson. And uh, yeah, this is the 25th anniversary 4K release. Looks good in 4K. So next up we've got, you know, what used to be one of my favorite films, um, The Fifth Element. I don't know where I stand on this film as an adult, but as a kid I really, really liked it. Um, this is the 4K release, although it has the same steelbook packaging that the Blu-ray edition before it was released in. There's not even a 4K logo. I'm pretty sure they just recycled the exact same steelbook. And um, yeah, nothing too fancy on the inside. But I think it's about the same price as the standard release, so I went for it. One of my favorite Luc Besson films, um, another sci-fi movie with a real cartoonish element to it. But it's, um, it's really captivating in a lot of ways. A very young Mia Javovich in, a, in the role, uh, or not the starring role. This is a Bruce Willis film, and then she's kind of secondary to that, I suppose. Uh, yeah, just one of those films that you may like it, you may not. Um, or like me, you may have enjoyed it a lot when you were younger. And then as an adult, I mean, I still enjoy it. But it's only because I have such fond memories of it as an adult or as a child. A young person, not a child, and um, you know, I don't know what it would—I don't know what it would be like seeing it for the first time as an adult. Here's a steel book I'm trying to keep together, but it's slippery. Um, it's a Finding Nemo on 4K in this steel book from Best Buy, and uh, it's this thing was like ten dollars. It's been sold out, and I haven't seen it come back in stock for a long time. But um, I don't know. I kind of like the simple artwork. Got the seagulls on the back. And uh, yeah, a three disc set here with the 4K and two Blu-ray discs. So for 10 bucks, had to go for that. I think I only had it on DVD previously. If you haven't seen Finding Nemo, I mean, it's not up there with Die Hard. You don't have to see it, but you'll enjoy it if you've enjoyed uh, you know, the films they've made up to that point and even since then. Very different from Pixar. We have uh, First Blood. This is the first film in the Rambo series and as far as i'm concerned the only film now i say that having not seen uh rambo or last blood which came out recently but first blood i feel like just works on its own very self-contained film you know somewhat dealing with the effects of uh you know being in the vietnam war and returning to society and not being appreciated it's one of those action films that you know, the franchise became super over-the-top action and very violent. And this first film, despite having some of those eccentricities, uh, retains its value, in my opinion, because it, it holds on to that core concept of the, you know, soldier kind of abandoned by society and trying to re-enter it, but just running into problems. It's one of those films that you've probably seen, right? It's on 4K now. It's been... <sighs> It, the coloring has definitely been changed. It's probably never looked better, but it definitely doesn't look like how I remember it used to look. I think they've tweaked the color timing for the release, definitely. Here's a uh, film that I'd never seen before. So this is a blind buy. Um, Flash Gordon. Don't even know if I'd really heard of it, but it was one of those uh, early 4K releases when Arrow Video started doing 4K sets. And I think it was my birthday and Best Buy was giving me like a certain like 10% off and I bought this uh, with that and um, I, I enjoyed it. I'm not sure it's a film that I would recommend, but if you like cheesy, I mean, this is technically, I think, a comic book movie, but um, it, it's just 80s cheese, but in 4K, it actually looks very good. So I think the way that it looks almost elevates the film, it makes it look more modern than it really is. Sticking with the, there goes our first movie, Fallen Down. Sticking uh, with the Aero video theme. Here is maybe the newest movie I've bought lately. Um, Django, and I still haven't watched it. It's actually two films. It's Django, and then there's like a Blu-ray disc of another film called Texas Adios, which I don't think is related to the first film beyond the fact that it's the same actor, Franco Nero, playing the, the main character. So, um, interesting that they threw another movie in with it. Not the same character and not the same director even. Um, but hey, I'll take two movies in one. Again, this came with a fancy box. Uh, you know, I sold that box and, you know, I just really need to hold on to the movie. So I haven't watched it yet, so I cannot recommend it. But it's a spaghetti western. 
And if you're into those kind of movies, like I am, um, I assume there's a high probability that I will enjoy it on some level. Here is Bram Stoker's Dracula, and this is Francis Ford Coppola's interpretation of the Dracula story. This is uh, the 4K release. It's a, it's a pretty good movie, and uh, I mean, I enjoy it. I remember reading the book Dracula in high school. I was taking a British literature class, I believe, and we had a list of things to choose from, and I saw Dracula on the list, and I, I grabbed it, and I reserved it, and was like, hey, that's the one I'm going to read before anyone else could take it, and boy, was that a boring book. I did not realize. 400 pages written in the form of journal entries, so compared to the book, this was way more interesting, um, but yeah, people don't necessarily love this film. Some hit or miss performances. I enjoy it though, but not the director's best or anywhere near it. Dread. I'm realizing now that only a little ways into this movie collection, this is my third Alex Garland film on 4K, so congrats to him having basically all his movies put out in the 4K format already. Um, so yeah, based on the character Judge Dread, which I think is a comic, I don't know or a graphic novel or whatever. I don't know the history of that. I know there was a movie called Judge Dredd uh, with Sylvester Stallone who played this character, and this is not necessarily a remake, but it's a, a, you know, a more modern movie based on that character, and I really like it. It's kind of got a diehard feel because um, we're all in this, this tower. Maybe not even diehard, maybe more like The Raid, if you've seen The Raid. But yeah, it all takes place in a tower and you're working your way up and getting through the bad guys and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's just a really enjoyable action movie. Again, not really my type of movie, but I really enjoyed it. Um, just a really well-made flick. Here is a movie that is confusing as far as its title because it's called Edge of Tomorrow. When I saw it in the theater, it was called Edge of Tomorrow. And on the steelbook, it says Edge of Tomorrow. Um, but in some releases, the Blu-ray release specifically, it dwelt on this... Uh, what I would call just like, you know, a sub-caption, you know, for marketing. Live, die, repeat. So I think some people actually think the movie is called Live, Die, Repeat, and it's not their fault. The people, have, whoever makes this packaging on other, you know, versions of this film has made the Live, Die, Repeat very big. Maybe that title works better. Edge of Tomorrow is pretty bland, and it is a pretty bland title. The movie, although, uh, is very interesting. It's based on a... I forget the source that it's based on, but... Um, it's also got an interesting title, like All You Want Is Kill or something like that. That would have been an interesting title to go with. Anyway, it's a Tom Cruise movie. Emily Blunt is also in it. She's in the, the back. And um, yeah, it's just a really cool concept. Let's just say it's kind of like Groundhog Day, where things are repeating over and over and over again, but meets like a sci-fi action movie. That's really all you need to know. It was super enjoyable the first time I saw it. You really can't experience it the same way twice. You know, Seeing it the first time is really a treat. All right, trying to keep things organized here. Moving on to Edward Scissorhands, Steelbook. This is just Blu-ray. Uh, that last one was Blu-ray as well. Um, got some nice interior art. This is a movie I feel like will probably pop up on 4K soon. Um, but yeah, one of Tim Burton's better films, him and Johnny Depp, one of their classic collaborations. I really like this Steelbook. I like this art on the front. There's just something about it, him looking through you know, the scissor blades on his hands. I don't know. They released this in a standard Blu-ray set, but I decided to go with the Steelbook because it looks really cool. If you haven't seen it, um, it's typical, uh, typical of Tim Burton in that era of his movie-making career. Him and Johnny Depp making movies together. His movies are a lot different these days, and that's not necessarily a good thing. E.T., classic Spielberg film. Um, this is the 4K release. It's like this limited edition set that has the 4K, but also has, I guess, there's a, looks like there's a booklet, but I think there's also like the soundtrack in here, like on a CD. This thing was like a lightning deal on Amazon. Picked it up for 10 bucks, and uh, it has this lenticular front, so as I move it, you kind of see Elliot and E.T. moving across the moon in their uh, bicycle. Uh, just a classic movie. Um, Sci-fi, technically, um, you know, just one of those emotional movies which Spielberg was known for making at the time and still to a degree makes a boy uh, discovering an alien and becoming his friend. Here's a great set. A set that was hard for me to find and I don't even know if it's already, you know, 
not necessarily gone out of print, but um, this was the best buy, best buy exclusive, I believe. It's Evil Dead 1 and 2, the original, because um, Evil Dead did get remade. And then there's Ash versus Evil Dead. It gets a little confusing. These are the first two films on 4K in a steelbook with this... Uh, I like these protective slip covers that some of these releases have been giving. First of all, it keeps the steelbook clean. You know, I'll keep my fingers off of it. But yeah, you get the movies on 4K, but you also get the the Blu-ray discs, which have all the special features. So I already had them on Blu-ray, and I was afraid to lose the bonus features, but fortunately, they included the Blu-ray discs in there as well. Uh, I like these movies a lot, and I like the third one, even though it's not called Evil Dead, Army of Darkness. And then you could technically even say Drag Me to Hell could be the fourth one, but it's a little bit of a stretch. Um, yeah, Evil Dead 1 and 2, just kind of wacky slapstick horror movies. I don't know. You got to see them if you haven't seen them. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you'd like it or not. Hit or miss with some people, I suppose. Here's one that's definitely going to be hit or miss with folks. This is the Gamera High C Trilogy, a somewhat recent release from Arrow Video. This is uh, just a four, and it's not 4K, it's Blu-ray, uh, but it's a steelbook edition of the release. They have a few different sets. There's one that has all the Gamera movies because there's some old ones. It's just like Godzilla. I'm not a big Godzilla fan. I much prefer these three films. And there's a story behind it. So Godzilla, I like the first movie. And we'll actually come uh, up with that movie uh, down the line. Um, but the sequels, oh my gosh. I mean, it's just been hard for me to find like another Godzilla movie I really like. To me, they're kind of boring. And there's barely any Godzilla in a lot of them. And a lot of people talking that I don't care about. This trilogy, initially released uh, with uh, Mill Creek, put out like a really cheap two-disc DVD that had all three films, and I picked it up at like a bin at Walmart for like seven dollars. Heard of it, but never watched them, and I really liked them. So when this release came out, I decided to spring for it. They're just uh, they're kaiju films. I mean, if you like a guy in a suit, rubber suit, fighting other monsters that are also guys in rubber suits. This is that kind of movie, but I find them these three to be much better than the Godzilla offerings. And so I'm sorry if you're a Godzilla fan. I wish I was. There's so many Godzilla movies, and I wish I could love them all. Um, but these three stand, you know, above Godzilla in my opinion. They're so special, uh, but they're very unique. So I don't know. It's like if you're a kaiju fan, you probably already know what these are. And if you're not, I don't know. You can give them a shot. There's three films in here, and uh, some really colorful art. Uh, I love this artwork on the back especially. looks really, really good. And um, yeah, one of, the, one of the biggest surprises of movies I'd never seen that I picked up and just bought having never seen and was like, wow, that was great. So let's see if I can keep things in order here because I've kind of screwed up my list. So that was GA. So yeah. Next up is Ghost. This is a movie I've seen many times. Used to have a VHS of it when I was a kid. Um, this is the Blu-ray release, the Paramount Presents line that they've been doing. Um, so kind of fancy packaging a little bit. Um, I haven't opened this, but I've seen this movie many times, especially on VHS when I was younger. I don't know why I was watching it when I was younger. <laughs> Probably just to see the whole scene with Demi Moore and the clay pot thing. But um, it's a movie I enjoy, and I saw it in the theater. They did like a, a spoof of it uh, in town. We have a Alma Draft House. They do this thing called it's called Master Pancake. It's kind of like Mystery Science Theater, um, where they play the movie, and then there's live comedians that are making fun of it. But they were making fun of it, and I was actually focused on it. Like, hey, I actually like this movie, so I bought it when it came out on Blu-ray. Here we have Ghostbusters one and two in this little digibook set. Um, it's got some, you know, text and pictures and stuff, and then you got the two films, each on their own disc. Just a really simple, straightforward digibook packaging. I think there's a 4K release of it. Some people love the first Ghostbusters, and I enjoy it, but again, it's like one of those movies where it's like, it's the best comedy ever. I don't know. It's funny. I like it, and I like that it has horror elements to it. The second one's not as good, and I never saw the reboot or quasi-sequel or whatever the one was with 
like the all female cast and now they're doing another reboot i guess where it's their kids or something i don't even know but trying to keep the ghostbusters thing alive i guess here we have gremlins on 4k steelbook one of those ones that i'm afraid to touch this thing because it's just a fingerprint magnet but i do like this cover where it has the um three warning signs of don't expose them to light, don't expose them to water, and don't feed them after midnight. So if you haven't seen Gremlins, those are the rules. This is just the first film. There's two Gremlins films. I do own the second one digitally, and I enjoy the second one quite a bit. The first one's considered kind of a Christmas classic, and for good reason, because it's set around Christmas time. And I'm all on board with that. Anytime you can watch a holiday film that's also kind of a horror movie, I love it. Um, Get Out on 4K. This is a movie I enjoyed a lot. I remember seeing the trailer, and the trailer really hooking me with this lead actor, and I can't remember his name. He's become much more well-known now. He was recently in Judas and the Black Messiah. I think he might have even won a Golden Globe for that performance. Anyway, this is one of the first things he was in, that I've seen at least. He was in a Black Mirror episode prior to this movie, I think. And... Uh, yeah, in the trailer, his performance, his just his, he's sitting in this chair and like close up on his face and just these tears coming down. And, and I don't know, the trailer hooked me and the film was, it definitely lived up to it. So Jordan Peele's directorial debut, um, a movie that has a lot of subtext to it. Um, you know, there's a lot more going on uh, in relation to uh, its black main character. And, you know, there's just a lot of black uh themed messages the filmmaker is black and and that's kind of what he's gone on to do with his subsequent film which will come up later um but even outside of all that subtext it's just a really uh a really creative film and the fact that it's able to pack in all those messages and still be entertaining um is super impressive i enjoyed it a lot glory um, is a movie that I think I saw it once. I rented it with a friend on VHS way back. Um, you know, back when Blockbuster and Hollywood Video and those places were still around. And I don't think I probably liked it back then. I probably thought it was boring, but I bought it when it came out on 4K and appreciated it a lot more. Roughly based on a true story, a certain troop um, in the Civil War that was uh, all black soldiers with a white general, of course. They weren't gonna trust them to lead themselves, but uh, it's a touching war movie, heartbreaking. Denzel Washington puts in a strong performance here. That dude can cry on command, I think, in any role that he takes. But uh, yeah, just the good performances across the board, not maybe a super well-known movie, but if you like Civil War dramas, and specifically one that's focused on uh, the struggle of black Americans and, and some of them actually wanting to fight in the Civil War, uh, it's one of those things, again, where like I'd be super interested to know the details of the real history um, without the whatever might have been added for the movie adaptation. So, you know, I just realized that I dropped a movie earlier in it, so we skipped it. Uh, before Glory, we should have gotten to Gladiator. Of course I have Gladiator. Um, you know, this is a movie that was, you know, targeted right at me the age that it came out. And it's a movie, you know, I still really enjoy. It, winning Best Picture? I don't know. Did it deserve that? I, I don't know. It's a good movie. Um, but it's kind of like similar to Braveheart. In fact, those movies have been packaged together. Um, they just kind of cater, I think, to the same type of audience. So. If you like big muscular guys swinging swords and killing each other with them, this is that kind of movie. But with the Ridley Scott touch, um, you know, it elevates it and makes it, you know, a pretty epic film for the modern era. Now let's get back on track with not as epic of a movie, but it sure tried to be Godzilla 1998. You know, I like to think that the movies I have in my collection are all pretty foolproof. Like I don't buy movies just to buy them. I buy them if I really enjoy them. Godzilla is testing that idea a little bit, but I have to confess, and it's purely nostalgic, but I do like this movie. Again, because the age I, I was when it came out, um, this movie was really being targeted to me, and I saw it, I'm not sure I saw it in theaters, but I sure did watch it a lot on VHS um, and TV when it was on. And uh, you know what, I have rewatched it, and 
it has its flaws, but it sure is entertaining. Um, and it's not technically a Godzilla film. Um, people who are Godzilla purists don't include it as canon. Um, so let's just call it a big lizard in New York movie. Big iguana, really, if you want to get technical, I suppose. Here's a movie that I really enjoy called Grind House. This is a film that's co-directed by Robert Rodriguez, who lives here in Austin, Texas, local filmmaker, and Quentin Tarantino. And they came here to film, well, Quentin came here to film his section. I love when you see a movie that is from your town or city, and um, so there are stretches in this film that I'm like, oh, that's this part of town and that part of town. And um, yeah, so this was a double feature, Grindhouse style. I mean, it's called Grindhouse, but we have two films, um, Planet Terror and Death Proof. So Robert Rodriguez's movie and Quentin Tarantino's movie. And uh, yeah, it just comes in this cool kind of fold out cardboard slip cover. I enjoy these films. People want to ask, which one's your favorite? But I've always looked at it as one singular film because that's how it was released. Um, and I think I saw it at least twice in theaters. And it's a long movie. It's over three hours, I think. I saw it one time and then I kept taking friends to see it. I think I might have seen it three times, honestly. And I just think of it as one movie, honestly. But if you wanted me to pick which one's my favorite, I like Planet Terror better. It's more interesting to me. Um, Death Proof gets a while to get going, and then it's really intense towards the end. Uh, all right, here we have Halloween, the original, on 4K. This is another movie that kind of has a weird color correction to modernize it a bit. So I'm glad it has the Blu-ray also, because I think the Blu-ray that's on here actually has the old color temperature. That's really technical, geeky stuff. If you haven't seen Halloween, um, you should check it out. Do I think you'll love it? I don't know. Um, where the franchise is now with the 2018 Halloween and then the two sequels that are already coming out, um, this is very tame in comparison to that. But it's John Carpenter's first, is it his first film or was it Assault on Precinct 13? I'm not 100% sure, but it's a John Carpenter flick and uh, it's just one of those, it's considered a classic. It's not one of my favorites, but I do enjoy it. Here we have this is a big old collection of films, um, a somewhat recent release called The Hammer, or The Ultimate Collection, and it's Hammer Films. So Hammer was a studio that made not a whole bunch of movies, like less than 200 films, I think, in the span of 30 years or however long it was around. It's still technically around, I think, but um, this was during their heyday. And these are not their best films, but it's a pretty good price set, and you get 20 movies. So even if five of them are good, um, and you know, I, I haven't, I think there's maybe like two that I haven't watched yet, but I've gone through most of them. Um, so I can't really give you a synopsis of what we have in here because there's so many films, but you've got movies that are remakes of the Universal Monsters. So we got Revenge of Frankenstein and Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. So those deal with kind of the Universal Monsters. And there's movies that are just uh, totally different. If I had to pick favorites out of this set, it might be that stand out to me. Cash on Demand was really uh, impressive. The Snorkel was really interesting. Uh, Scream of Fear, I think, I enjoyed quite a bit. Never Take Candy from a Stranger was an interesting movie that deals with the topic of pedophilia. So, I don't know, this, is, uh, this isn't something I would tell people to go seek out, but if you're a Hammer fan, you, you know what you're getting into with these kind of movies. Here's another Hammer box set. This is another Blu-ray set. This is just eight films though, and these are, I actually haven't watched all of these, but it's Brides of Dracula, Curse of the Werewolf, Night Creatures, Phantom of the Opera, Paranoiac, The Kiss of the Vampire, Nightmare, Evil of Frankenstein. So I've basically seen the ones that have to do with universal monsters like the werewolf and Dracula and Frankenstein, but I haven't seen some of these. Um, all these films have kind of a similar feel so if you like Hammer films, they definitely have, at least from that period, a feel to them. Here's the Harry Potter movies. I won't spend too much time talking about these because I don't love them. I think I was maybe just a little too old to, well, I don't know. I don't know when this first movie came out. Maybe I was the right age, but I never read the books. And so I finally decided to buy this. It was on sale like, you know, one year and I picked up all eight movies and yeah, they're, they're okay. 
Um, it's definitely, I would say, a weak part of my collection. Um, they're okay. It's not entirely my thing. Seems more aimed at uh, a younger audience um, that, as an adult, I just can't fully appreciate. Here we go with um, Hellboy. This is the 4K release. Says it includes, hmm, the theatrical and director's cut versions of the film. I know I watched it when I bought it, but I don't remember having that choice. So I, I, I guess I must have picked one and I assume I watched the director's cut. I don't know the difference between the two, but it's a pretty good um, comic book film. I'm not a big comic book fan. You're not going to find in my collection that I have really many comic book movies at all. I guess at this point we've really only had The Dark Knight and Flash Gordon, technically. But, you know, the big draw for this is Guillermo del Toro directed it, and so he makes a really stylish movie, and um, it's enjoyable. I mean, some people say the second one is, is even better. I'm not sure. I'm not sure which one I like better. Um, but I do enjoy the first one. I don't own the second one. Alfred Hitchcock Collection. I used to own this on Blu-ray, and it included one more movie than you get on this 4K set. So I don't know why they removed North by Northwest, which I used to have in the Blu-ray set that this replaced. In this one you get Rear Window, Vertigo, Psycho, and The Birds. Um, I've seen all of those, except The Birds, several times. Rear Window is probably my favorite, and Psycho is probably my second favorite. Although Vertigo, people say, is like one of the best movies ever. Uh, your mileage will vary with these films. I love Rear Window. I could watch that endlessly. The Birds I need to rewatch because I don't remember loving it. I don't find Birds scary, but um, I should probably give it a second shot. Here we have Independence Day. So similar to Godzilla 1998. Same director. I guess he made that right after this one maybe, but um, just big, dumb, fun kind of movie. Um, basically kind of War of the Worlds uh, for the 90s. Looks good on 4K. Comes with different cuts of the film, I think. And yeah, there's nothing too special about this release. If you haven't seen Independence Day, just uh, one of those classic Will Smith performances, him and Jeff Goldblum. You know, Jeff Goldblum playing it straight and Will Smith just being funny. Kind of the whole Men in Black uh, kind of dynamic we got. And we'll come to Men in Black here in a little bit too. Interstellar on 4K, Christopher Nolan movie. As much as people praise his Dark Knight films, I think this is one of his best movies, if not his best. I really enjoyed this. I saw it in IMAX. Visually stunning movie. Looks great on 4K. Um, interesting premise. Heavy emotions and... Um, Great uh, performance from Matthew McConaughey. If you haven't seen this film, if you like sci-fi, um, I would recommend checking it out. And let's see. Next up is Inception. So, ah, oh, interesting that we have those two Christopher Nolan movies next to each other. Another one of his better movies, again, that I would put over any of his Dark Knight films, personally. I like this steelbook of it. I've always liked this cover art. Um, this is what I remember the poster looking like when the movie came out as opposed to the really lame just kind of people standing on a street that the standard Blu-ray had. Nothing fancy inside though. <clears throat> Again, sometimes just a nice steel book is enough to put it over the top. Oh, here on the back we get people standing on a waterfall. So they've always got to put the actors in it, I guess. Um, but yeah, if you haven't seen um, Inception, I mean, Dream Within a Dream, Within a Dream, movie didn't take the dream concept as far as it really could have gone but you know it, it did a good job of layering it and it was just entertaining a little long but again one of my favorite christopher nolan films for sure here we have the indiana jones uh what do they call it the complete adventures so this is a 4K set that I have coming in the mail. It should be here any day. It could be here today. I'm looking downstairs to see if it shows up at the door. But um, for now, for this video, you're going to get my Blu-ray set, which came out years ago. <clears throat> it's one of those digibooks, um, but it's got cool art, and it's just, you know, it's one of those where you have to 
slide the discs out, which I am not a fan of, but what are you going to do? This is the only way. I don't know if they ever even released these individually. Um, the first film is a classic, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Temple of Doom, it's weird. The sequel is a prequel, and you don't even really get that until you just like figure out that, oh, the date is older than in Raiders. So kind of weird that they went with a prequel with Temple of Doom. A lot of people don't like Temple of Doom. I don't enjoy it certainly as much as the others, but it's not throwaway in my opinion. And then Last Crusade, some people's favorite. For me, it's neck and neck with Raiders. Uh, depending how I'm feeling on that day, I like one you know, over the other. But Sean Connery shows up in that third film. That's a, that's a, big, that's a big thing. And then we have the fourth film, which again, was one of those sequels made many, many years later. What was it even called? Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So that's in here, and um, that'll be in the 4K set that was just released recently, and they're gonna make a fifth film. So, you know, the fourth one was, I didn't like it when I first saw it. I've come around to enjoy it at least, appreciate it a little more on repeat viewings. And the fifth one that's coming out, well, I guess they're filming it now. It probably won't come out till next year, but, yeah, we'll see if they release another complete set or... I really don't want to have to buy those movies again. Uh, maybe I'll just have to buy it separately, if it turns out to be good. Here we go with uh, Steelbook of It, 4K release. So, um, this was uh, a mini-series initially in the 90s, a two-part mini-series. We got a two-part theatrical version, so this is It Chapter 1, I guess, technically. And um, you know, I do have It Chapter 2 here, so I guess I might as well just put them up side by side. I do wish they released them together in some cool set, but I just went with the Steelbook on this one, and then they had, you know, slipcover edition of this one. The first one's quite good. I enjoyed it a lot. Saw it in the theater. The second one, just like the miniseries, not as interesting. And I think it has to do with the fact that the adults just aren't as interesting as the kids. The Losers Club as adults are not as endearing as the Losers Club as innocent children. So, uh, I mean, I haven't rewatched this since I bought it. I saw it in the theater. Um, yeah, I don't know, I'll give it a shot, but definitely not as good as the first one. I will note, if you decide to go the Steelbook route for the first movie, it is only one disc, and you lose the bonus disc that came in the standard Blu-ray, which has two discs. So. I do not know why for the premium steelbook packaging they decided to remove disc two. Very disappointing. It's a Wonderful Life, a movie I've seen many times. Well, I won't say many times, several times. It's one of those movies that comes out around Christmas, but I have not opened it. Uh, this 4K release was one of those movies I bought on Black Friday, I think. Got it for 10 bucks. Um, just one of those movies that, uh, you know, it's, it's a story where he doesn't appreciate his life and then he gets to see what it would be like if he'd never been born and how that affects people. That idea has kind of been repeated in films following it. This is just kind of the classic version of that story. And uh, I enjoy it, but people that don't like black and white films maybe will not enjoy it as much. Here's a big one, Jaws, the 4K, uh, got the lenticular cover, looks pretty cool. And um, this was one that went on sale for 10 bucks, I think. I can't believe how cheap these 4K movies get. When I was buying DVDs, I feel like I never got a DVD for less than 10 or $15. And now we're Blu-ray, 4K, and like, I'm picking up some of these movies cheaper than I ever was able to buy a DVD for. Anyway, that aside, if you've not seen Jaws, you gotta see it. It's like the shark movie. I recently watched The Shallows, um, which is a movie that came out several years ago, but I'd never seen it, and I like shark films, uh, but nothing ever really touches the original Jaws, in my opinion. This has that 70s feel. It's People may not like it visually. I mean, it looks stellar on 4K, but um, yeah, if you haven't seen Jaws, I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. It's It's hard to talk about a movie that's so so influential. And then right next to it is another Spielberg, Spielberg, Spielberg movie that, um, whoa, um, well, it's a collection of movies. He directed the first two. Um, this is the Jurassic Park 
uh, collection and it's got another one of those digibooks. They love these digibook packagings. Um, so this has the first three films, Jurassic Park films, and then the last one is Jurassic World, which I do not really like. I gotta be honest. Um, I saw that movie in the theater and I, I was, I don't know. I could say, I could make a whole video on why I don't like that movie. It was so stupid to me. And, and kind of bloodless was kind of the big thing. It, it kept cutting away anytime someone was gonna get killed or chomped on. Then you have one scene where like a perfectly innocent person that really dwells on them like getting chomped apart by like this pterodactyl kind of thing. Bizarre movie, bizarre movie in my opinion. It's got this whole thing about a boy being a creeper. He's like breaking up with his, or I don't know if he's breaking up with his girlfriend, but then he's like, he just like keeps staring at girls like at, at the theme park. It's, I don't know, it's such a strange movie. I, I really don't like it, honestly. The first three movies are better than that one. And I say that even about part three. As far as I'm concerned, it's descending order in this set. Jurassic Park, classic, great. If you haven't seen, they bring back dinosaurs. Early CGI movie, revolutionized CGI and got us to where we are today. The Lost World, saw it as a kid, you know, I think that came out in 97. I wasn't quite a kid, but it, you know, I saw it in the theater. I thought it was good then. I still think it's decent now. You just get a lot more dinosaurs and a lot more Jeff Goldblum. Third movie, big drop off. Almost doesn't feel like the same and probably because Spielberg only directed the first two and someone else did the third. Joe Johnson, maybe? I'm just guessing. Someone like that. Um, Third one's not great, but it has some good dinosaurs, and the dinosaurs in the third one are all better than anything that I think was in Jurassic World. Um, I forget what the dinosaur in that one is even called, but the dinosaur, Spinosaurus or whatever in the third one, I don't know. I don't like Jurassic World. I just need to move on. It brings back bad memories. Karate Kid. This was a movie that I, I had never seen until I bought it on 4K. So... I don't know how I missed it, never saw it, still never seen any of the sequels, never saw the remake, bought it on 4K, enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, it has one of those, is it the 80s? It's gotta be 80s. It's one of those movies that ends on like a silly freeze frame. I hate movies that end on a freeze frame. I hate that style. I don't know if they decided to do that in movies that, ah, can't stand that. Otherwise, it's a pretty good movie. Um, some silly parts, but some good parts. Emotional parts. Um, Knives Out, so good, so good, this movie. This is my favorite movie of 2019. Is that when it came out? What a surprise. Um, I didn't know what to expect from this movie. I don't even remember if, you know, if I saw the trailer and wanted to see it or if I just went because a friend invited me, but however I got in the theater and saw this movie, wow, wow. Who done it mystery. Um, they're gonna do some sequels. They're gonna be like Netflix exclusives, I think. It's so good. It's, it's so good. Great cast, too. Here's another Jim Henson film. Uh, Labyrinth. This was another movie that I had not seen until I bought it on 4K. Always heard of it, just never saw it. And um, it's pretty good. So the other movie I have of his is The Dark Crystal. So there's some, similar, uh, there's some similarities there with all the puppetry and stuff, and that, again, is the best part of this movie. Otherwise, there's some silly 80s elements to it. Um, David Bowie being in it. Bowie Bowie, I never know how to say his name right, but um, uh, he's got some, you know, some good singing parts and an awkward-looking uh, crotch piece or whatever he's wearing. It's an interesting movie. Uh, I feel like some people probably love it, and newer audiences may not enjoy it as much, uh, but I liked it, you know, for not having seen it for the first time until about three or four years ago. Last Action Hero, a movie that I owned on Blu-ray and looked pretty bad, so I bought it on 4K. Haven't opened it, so I've seen the film, but uh, I gotta imagine this looks a lot better, and it comes in this steelbook packaging. Some people don't seem to like this movie very much. It's definitely not one of the better Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, or even, um, the director, John McTiernan, not one of his better movies either. He did Predator, I believe. Predator and I feel like another big one that, oh, that, uh, did he do Die Hard? I think he might have done Die Hard. Um, anyway, uh, this movie isn't quite up to the standards of that director or the main actor here, Schwarzenegger, 
but I think it's it's fun. It's it's a fun movie. Um, the concept is really interesting. You know, going into uh, into a movie basically, um, and characters within the movie. You know, just like going through all the action hero tropes and stuff. It's being very meta about the whole thing. Here is a movie that I like a lot. So from the same director that gave us The Fifth Element, whereas that movie I enjoyed a lot as a kid, this I enjoy increasingly more as an adult. So um, this release, it's called Leon the Professional, but uh, internationally it was released as Leon. In the States it was released as The Professional. It was a very truncated, edited down version in the States. Um, and so this is that restored international version. And it was edited because there is some, uh, it's just, we have Natalie Portman as a very young girl. She was maybe 12 or younger when she did this. And she's great. Her acting is amazing. You can tell she was going to be, you know, a great actress. But her and Jean Renault's character, who's much older, they kind of explore a romantic element of their relationship that I'm sure made censors in America very uncomfortable, but it's handled, it's not meant to be that, that way. We see it from the girl's perspective. She kind of develops romantic feelings for this older man, but the older man never reciprocates those feelings back down to her. It's a sweet movie. The relationship is very sweet, um, but it's a delicate balance that it walks. That's not the main thrust of the movie though. It's an action movie, it's a revenge film, and it's like this older guy teaching a younger girl to be a hitman. That's a way better selling point than everything I said right before that. So just be aware of the, the child-adult relationship. But I mean, this is an, it's an action movie um, and a revenge thriller. Life Force. I love this, this artwork on this steel book. It's probably better than the film itself. This comes from director Toby, Toby Hooper, who did or will forever be known as the director of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and was, probably was never able to escape that. Aside from the success of Poltergeist, which to this day people debate whether he directed it or whether Steven Spielberg uh, directed it because Spielberg produced the film. Poltergeist, that is. Spielberg had nothing to do with this film and I'm sure wouldn't touch it. Um, you, it's, a, it's a very interesting, oh gosh, I don't know how to describe it, a zombie sci-fi movie. Zombies, not in space, but um, there's a sci-fi element to it. and. Um, uh, what I remember seeing the first time was that this uh, actress is topless for a large portion of the beginning of the film. And so if that's enough to get you to check it out, it's worth a look. Um, definitely one of Toby Hooper's best films, but considering his filmography, <clears throat> that's not necessarily saying a lot. And that pains me to say, uh, because he is a, he, first of all, he's passed away, but he's also a local Texas, or was a local Texas filmmaker. Going back to local Texas stuff, Lonesome Dove, a movie I always heard about because it was made around the area here, and there's even people that I've met that were associated with the production. Um, and so I finally got around to checking it out when they released it in this cool steelbook, again with the removable sleeve. I like that style, it protects the steelbook. And this is a mini series, so um, I think it's four episodes. This is like the 80s, mid 80s. You got Robert Duvall, Tommy Lee Jones. It's a Western, and it's basically these guys trying to run cattle from some part of a state, and they might even cross state lines. Basically, they're just running cattle. You know, they're trying to get from one place to another, a long distance, and, you know, dangerous and life-threatening scenarios happen in between, but love and romance happens in between as well. And there is a Diane Lane, a very young Diane Lane in this strikingly beautiful... Uh, I was surprised to see her in this, and wow, what a... What a beautiful young woman. I mean, my goodness. I didn't know she acted when she was, you know, that far back into the 80s. Um, here's one that comes from Luc Besson again. So he gave us Fifth Element, gave us Leon the Professional. He's given us stuff in between, but this is the only other film of his I own, I believe. And um, this is one of the first 4K movies I bought. I bought it, again, because I was just trying to get some 4K titles, I think. It's not a great film, but it's good. It's interesting. Um, you know, it's been quite a while since I've even seen it, so I'm not even entirely sure what the story is. But uh, um, let's see, Altered Dangerous New Drug. Yeah, I was gonna say, I feel like it's almost kind of like that movie Unlimited or something with Bradley Cooper. There's a drug she takes and it makes gives her kind of like super strength or superpowers. Not in a superhero kind of way, but just in like a badass 
assassin kind of way. Um, it's take it or leave it. Some people think it's great. Um, it's really going to be up to you. Here's another film that people might love or hate. My wife didn't like this movie at all. I thought it was amazing. Mad Max Fury Road for a sequel to, you know, a series, kind of a reboot, I guess, not really a sequel. I'm kind of even confused what stage of the chronology this takes place in. Um, Tom Hardy playing Max in this version, but what an exciting chapter in the franchise. I mean, the energy in this, directed by a 70-year-old George Miller, same guy who directed the other three films, so it's great that the same filmmaker got to uh, uh, carry on the story, this new chapter. I hope we get a sequel, because this movie was great. I think they're doing a spin-off of Charlize Theron's character, Furiosa. can't say I'm as interested in that, but who knows? This movie was surprising, so Maybe I should just reserve judgment until it actually comes out. The Martian, another movie that came out maybe around the same time. Uh, and this was, you know, this is the extended edition. It's already a pretty long movie, and I'm not sure what's extended about it, but this was an enjoyable film. It was a movie that got a lot of uh, Oscar buzz, I think. I'm not sure it's Oscar worthy, but um, I think it even got nominated in like a strange category. Like, comedy or something. I don't know what it was. It, it won something or got nominated in some strange category, but um, the movie itself is interesting. Um, you know, just guy on Mars, he gets stuck there and has to forage, you know, for himself, basically, you know, farm and make food for himself, waiting for a rescue, rescue mission to come pick him up. Um, Matt Damon just makes the movie work, his performance in it. Um, it's a fun movie. Fun, but also sad sometimes. The Mask of Zorro, a movie I hadn't seen for a long, long time, got a 4K release, and I was like, hey, I don't remember if this is good or not, but I'll pick it up. And I was pleasantly surprised. They don't make movies like this anymore. This is just, these are the kind of movies that came out when I was prime movie going age, you know, like preteen. And uh, yeah, who, who directed this? Martin Campbell. I think he also did, he's done a bunch of stuff, but he did Casino Royale, which was a movie, a uh, James Bond movie that I really loved. Um, and he's done some other stuff. Anyway, it's just a really good action movie, you know, set in the time period that Zorro's in, and um, really great, great performances from Antonio Banderas, Anthony Hopkins, and a relative newcomer, I think, in Catherine Zeta-Jones in this. Um, and there was a sequel that came out several years later, but uh, I'm not sure I ever saw that, and I don't hear it's as good. Men in Black, Trilogy, on 4K. Um, haven't opened it, but I've seen these movies many times, especially the first one. I say many times. I've seen the first one many times. I've seen the second one maybe twice, and I've seen the third one maybe two or three times. First one's great. Again, that Will Smith dynamic where he's the comic and uh, Tommy Lee Jones plays it straight as Agent K, and um, I guess that carries into the sequel. I don't remember much about part two. Part two is kind of forgettable, honestly. And then part three does something really interesting um, as far as um, uh, who, who do they cast here? Josh Brolin to play a young uh, Tommy Lee Jones is Agent K, uh, which I think is kind of an inspired idea. It actually works out really, really well. Um, so kind of like a time jump in the third one, a creative way to, in my mind, end the series. I know they made Men in Black International, but I never saw that and it doesn't sound like it was all that good, but again, I guess I have to reserve judgment. Okay, here we go with um, Mission Impossible. Um, six movie collection on 4K. I waited and waited for this to go on sale and it finally got to a reasonable price and I bought it. And then I sold the Blu-rays because I don't need the Blu-rays, why do I need those? Got rid of that and now um, I measured the space. And so when the next two movies come out, whoa, it's like a perfect fit. For two more movies to go in there. So, I hope that the franchise will be done with two more movies. We know we're getting at least two more. And then this box set will still work. If it grows beyond that, I'll have to buy a new box set, I guess. Um, but these are good movies. Um, one of those franchises where they strangely get better as they go along. Not necessarily better, but I mean, the quality doesn't drop off. But generally improves as the movies go along. And, uh, you know, part two is probably the weakest one, but three 
was like really good where J.J. Abrams directed that entry and then just got even better with Ghost Protocol, what I think Brad Bird directed. And then the ones after that have all kind of blended together for me. Um, I think they're by the same director possibly, but they involve the same characters and um, more of the same storyline. You know, Ethan Hunt's always the central character, but um, the last, well, I guess the last two are the ones I'm talking about that feel kind of similar. Um, so Rogue Nation and Fallout. Rogue Nation is the one I really need to rewatch. I only saw that one time in the theater. So we got The Mummy next. And The Mummy, uh, is it called Part 2? No, it's called Returns, The Mummy Returns. So, whoosh, however this looks on camera. Um, the Mummy was a big part of, you know, again, I think just that time period of me watching movies at that prime age of 11 or 12 years old. So, remember that movie and uh, really enjoyed it, you know, kind of not at all like the original Universal monster, but this is the way to remake it. You know, just do something totally different. Make it an Indiana Jones style uh, adventure film. And they, they, they did that Tom Cruise mummy remake that I don't even want to know how, I mean, we know how that turned out. It killed the monster verse idea that they were going for. But um, then Mummy Returns is an okay sequel. It's actually pretty good, I think, but really bad CGI by the end. Um, with The Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Um, I think he just goes by Dwayne Johnson now. I always knew him as The Rock growing up as a wrestler, but yeah, his appearance at the end as the Scorpion King. Ooh, that's some, some rough CGI to look back on. Um, the Natural, here's a movie that, I don't know if this was a blind buy. I feel like I might have seen it before and then it came out in 4K and I just decided to buy it. Uh, I'm not a baseball ball fan, but I own a few baseball movies and I enjoy them for some reason, but not because of the baseball, but because of the stories around it. So this is loosely based on parts of a true story of a guy that's uh, in his prime to ready to play baseball to get drafted or whatever. He gets injured and it ruins his uh, chances, uh, he, or he can't play, you know, and then he tries to come back and play, you know, when he's middle-aged or something. It's Robert Redford, and he plays himself young and old. Really not believable that he's playing himself when he's 18 at the beginning of the movie, but aside from that, uh, uh, you know, pretty respectable film. Philadelphia, another one of those movies that's just a hardcore drama. Um, this was the first movie that uh, won Tom Hanks, I think, a Best Actor. And I think he set like a, you know, he did something where he won like twice or three times in a row. So like, I think it was like this year and then he won for like Forrest Gump or something the next year. Anyway, a uh, powerful performance from him in this film about a guy who uh, gets AIDS. Um, you know, he's gay, but no one knows he's gay, but then he gets AIDS and that kind of outs him. And it's in a period of time where that was really scandalous and being gay was really scandalous and um, his company tries to fire him but they're saying it's not because he's gay and it's this whole court drama of uh, trying to establish whether a company can really do that if they really have the grounds to let someone go um, based on their sexual orientation. Pirates of the Caribbean, Blu-ray. You're gonna notice I don't have a lot of standard Blu-ray cases and I'm just gonna say something about that now. I do not like and I've never liked these blue cases. They're ugly. They clash with the cover art a lot of the times, unless the cover art has a, a good amount of blue. But in this case, we have primarily orange and reds, and it just clashes and looks ugly with the blue. So aside from that, I'm just saying you're not going to see a lot of Blu-rays. I've actually systematically gotten rid of them, and I only get uh, you know Blu-rays if they're like this with the clear that looks much better a clear kind of transparent blu-ray case anyway parts of the caribbean itself the movie really fun really enjoyable enjoyed it from the day i saw it the first time i haven't actually watched it in a good amount of time so i should pop it in and see if it holds up one of the most fun movie going experiences that i recall having at a young age <clears throat> um here's a double feature era release of two spaghetti westerns, A Pistol for Ringo and The Return of Ringo. So unlike that Django 4K release that I talked about earlier, these two films actually do have to do with each other. 
um, not because the uh, filmmaker is, um, or the filmmaker is the same, and a lot of the cast are the same, um, but uh, it's just a good double feature. It's not the same character in each film, but I hadn't seen this, it was a blind buy, and I thought it'd be a good pairing with the Django release I got. So I have watched these, even though I haven't watched Django. These are enjoyable, they're fun. They're not up to the standard of the Man With No Name trilogy with Clint Eastwood, but um, they're good, they're creative, and uh, the guy playing Ringo in each one plays it differently, plays those characters differently. They're not the same type of person. All right, next up we have Pitch Black. Speaking of dark things, does it feel like it's gotten darker in here? I don't know, I think it might be about to rain outside or something. This is the Arrow release, uh, 4K. And I owned this on Blu-ray before, so it has the theatrical and the director's cut. Um, this is uh, interesting that Arrow, Arrow put this out. Like, it's not a very highly regarded film, I didn't think. Kind of like a sci-fi, something you'd see on Sci-Fi Channel. Um, and it is a sci-fi movie about a guy who's kind of like a prisoner, and then there's like a bounty hunter who has him, and they're traveling together on the same spaceship, and they crash land on a planet with all these creatures that can see in the dark, and he's got special abilities to see in the dark, and yeah, it's a pretty good movie, and the fact that Arrow gave it this special 4K treatment is surprising, but uh, yeah, pretty good flick. Planet Earth 2, one of the first 4K discs I bought. I have the original Planet Earth on Blu-ray, and um, yeah, this uh, was on sale, I guess, at some point, or maybe I had some rewards points through Best Buy. It was initially quite expensive, but somehow I got it for maybe like less than 20 bucks. Really good demo disc. Um, there's some shots in here that are just like exquisite in 4K. You know, it's a nature documentary, all sorts of areas of the world, different uh, types of environments, and yeah, it really shines in uh, 4K and with HDR. Um, here is a box set of the Predator films. There's, I think they did a, um, a three film and a four film. It's kind of interesting that they assumed maybe some people would just want the first three movies. So they, they released this around the time that the fourth film came out, which is called The Predator. The naming structure of these movies is kind of weird. So we have Predator, the original, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, John McTiernan directed, I believe, and, um, that one's great, that one's a classic. It's kind of silly and cheesy in a macho kind of way, but um, it, it's actually a really cool, uh, I mean, beyond the story, like uh, the creature design of the Predator is really great, even from the first movie. Like they don't even really have to improve on it that much in the sequels, it's really good. I think Stan Winston designed it um, and looks good on 4K too. Always looked pretty crappy on um, Blu-ray and had a really bad Blu-ray release that uh, had all this noise reduction applied to it. So it looks good on 4K. The second one, I've never been a fan. <laughs> uh, I, it's just so different. It brings the predators to the city, um, you know, out of the jungle and into an urban environment, which seems like a logical maybe thing to do, like change it up. It just doesn't really work for me. And the whole voodoo thing that they try to tie into it. And I don't know, it's, um, I, I assume some people might like it, but of all the films, it's my least favorite. Um, and uh, that's saying something because the predator isn't all that great it's not a bad movie it's just so different from the others that it's hard for me to really enjoy it like i do the other films then after that we have predators which was robert rodriguez produced and i think filmed around here but he didn't direct it some guy with a hard to say name directed it and um i enjoy predators a good bit adrian brody is no arnold schwarzenegger but listening to it with the commentary and understanding that they were kind of trying to do not the antithesis of Schwarzenegger, but just trying to get like a, a leaner guy. Um, I, now, now that I understand that it was intentional, I'm like, oh, okay, I, I, can, I can accept that a little bit more. But Predators is a really interesting um, premise where they just drop all these bad people on a planet for the Predators to hunt. And then you're kind of, you know why some people are there, but some people you're like, why is this person here? And then you find out as the film develops. And uh, The Predator, um, huge disappointment, and, and it is, uh, you know, but that was the general consensus, and I was almost afraid to see it. I didn't see it in the theater, I saw it for the first time when I bought this set, and you know what? It's one of those movies that people hated so much that the bar was so low that I actually ended up enjoying it quite a bit. I won't say quite a bit, but you know, I, I don't hate it. I will probably watch it again at some point, but it has some glaring issues and some weird continuity where you can just tell that things, like, I think there were like reshoots on the movie, and it, it feels like it was a mess. Um, 
but it's not total trash is what I'm trying to say, I guess. A Quiet Place on Steelbook. This is from Mondo. These are these Mondo branded Steelbooks. Um, and you can't really see the cover because the copy I got has this, like there's just like plastic inside that it's not opened. And then inside that there's even more plastic that somehow is all screwed up here. So it's a pretty cool looking cover. Um, and a movie that I liked a fair amount. I'm actually going to go see A Quiet Place 2 this coming week as a double feature. There's some, some uh, theaters that are playing it just for this week as a double feature. So I'll get to see this one again and then watch A Quiet Place 2 uh, directly after it. So we'll see how they fit together. This film, you know, ended pretty clearly going into another movie and we're probably going to get a third one. So we'll see how A Quiet Place 2 turns out. It's doing pretty well at the box office. Uh, post-pandemic performance at least um, so hopefully it's as good as the first one requiem for a, a dream this is not a movie you're going to uh, want to watch often it's not an enjoyable film but i would say it's still a good film darren aronofsky directed it this is the director's cut on 4k and um, it's just a rough movie to watch but basically to try to explain it the movie is a drugs are bad psa basically um, you know just people uh, different types of drugs, you know, you have people who are the typical drug dealers and are buying drugs and, and abusing drugs, but then you also have people that are, or, or a character that is given drugs in the form of painkillers or, or like an opioid, you know, that's affecting their mental capabilities. So um, I think it probably was saying a message at the time that it was released, but still relevant now and, and, and a pretty creative film and a really uh, catchy score, music score or theme that even outside of that movie was used in a lot of trailers for other movies subsequently. Ready Player One. Never read the book, and I was able to enjoy the movie, but I feel like people that read the book were kind of disappointed in the film. Um, this is new Spielberg, and honestly, I only watched this because of characters I saw that were in it. Like, even on the front here, we have the Iron Giant. I'm like, whoa, the Iron Giant's in there, and you got the DeLorean from Back to the Future, and in the trailer, you could catch glimpses of, like, Chucky, and, like, just some other, all these things, all these 80s kind of things in there. And, um, you know, the movie didn't quite live up to all that. It made for a good trailer. Um, look, it looks good on 4K, though, and, uh, you know, I have no idea what the book was like compared to this. Probably not. Uh, something that people who read the book are too impressed with the movie adaptation, but enjoyable enough. And again, a new Spielberg film. He's got a totally different style now that's almost unidentifiable for me. Um, the Revenant. I really enjoyed this film. Enjoyed being that I just thought it was a really good movie. Not a movie I want to watch a whole lot. You don't feel too good by the end of it. And um, with uh, Annihilation, which I mentioned earlier, this would be uh, up there with you know, that movie in the most terrifying scenes involving a bear. Uh, but uh, great performances across the board. Uh, DiCaprio and Tom Hardy in this film and just, just a brutal movie. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's not, it's not going to be everyone's taste, but I, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit for the type of film that it is. Rogue One. Here's some more controversial stuff as far as my movie taste goes. Of the new Star Wars films, this is probably my favorite. I don't care for the J.J. movies or the Ryan Johnson, you know, movie that he did in the middle. Um, and, you know, the prequels are whatever, although I haven't seen them in a long time. So outside of the original trilogy, the only other movie, not only that is my favorite, but that I even care to ever watch, ever, <laughs> is this movie. So sorry, if, you're, if you like the new Star Wars movies, I'm glad you do. I saw them all in the theater and I wanted to like them, but I didn't really. Um, this is the only one that, although not perfect, and far from perfect even, um, it just so wonderfully leads into the first Star Wars film. Like when this ends, you just want to watch A New Hope, or as it was originally called, Star Wars, like right away. And it makes uh, the logic of how they destroy the Death Star in the first Star Wars film, a little more believable now, because it was a little silly how it happened in the first place. Uh, Saving Private Ryan, a very good Steven Spielberg film. Uh, in this steelbook that has this kind of embossed front where like their faces kind of come out. I don't know if that's coming across on camera. Unfortunately, one of those things where like you put a movie in a steelbook and then what? It says disc one here, but there's only one disc, so they ditched the bonus features, which is really disappointing. So. 
feel like I've got to buy the 4K set now because that has all the discs in it as far as I understand. But um, I think my wife bought this for me um, and, um, you know, it's just a really, I don't want to call it classic. I don't know if it's quite old enough to do that, but I mean, as far as war films go, this is a movie that, you know, used to play on TV when, uh, or on Memorial Day, and they used to play it uncut, I remember, because of the seriousness of the topic. They put a little warning and say, you're going to see it uncut, even though it's on television broadcast. Uh, it's a hard movie to watch, but based on, um, you know, the invasion of Normandy and troops in that situation. Totally different type of movie, Saw. This is a really recent movie that I purchased. This is just the first Saw film, the 2004 film, put out on 4K. Comes in this cool steelbook, again, that I like where it um, has a slip cover that kind of protects. Uh, so you got Billy the Puppet on the front. Dr. Gordon on the back with Jigsaw leering over him there. If you're a fan of the franchise or even just this film, because I mean, I think people that don't like the Saw films at least uh, acknowledge this first one as being pretty creative and having a really great twist ending. Um, you know, it started the whole torture porn terminology, but I don't watch this because I enjoy seeing people tortured. Um, it just happens to be a movie that has torture that's a part of it. And I feel like in the first one, it's really not even as much as you get in the sequels that really glorify the torture elements a lot more. Scarface, this was the, um, what do they call it? The gold edition or, or the limited edition. Either way, this came in like a bigger box set that had a statuette of the world is yours, you know, statue from the movie. I bought just that box set, sold the statue, because again, I don't care for all that excessive stuff. I just wanted this. And there was a standalone release of this, but it didn't include the original Scarface. So what's nice about this is that it also has the 1932 Scarface film on Blu-ray. Um, but you had to buy that big box set to get this. Very strange that they left it out of the normal. I mean, I guess that's the reason they wanted you to buy the bigger box set. So either way, I got the one I wanted. So I have both films, the 1932 version and the 1980 whatever. Al Pacino version, just a good gangster movie, um, Brian De Palma movie, and just the story of a guy who brags to riches story, but you know, in the criminal world, and so the rise and fall of the Tony Montana character. Movie you've probably seen, right? If you haven't seen it, you gotta check it out. Schindler's List, great, great, great Spielberg film, one you don't wanna watch all too often. I saw this when I was pretty young. My grandmother showed this to me. She was of German heritage and she thought it was important to show me, you know, th this movie and thought that I needed to understand what the Holocaust was about. And uh, I, I mean, it, it shocked me. And I remember her pausing the movie throughout it and explaining things as we went along. It's already a very long movie. So with all her explanations, this was probably like a four or five hour experience watching this for the first time. It's a very long film, shot in black and white primarily with only a little bit of color at the beginning and then uh, red that we see on this girl um, who shows up throughout the film. It's a hard to watch film, but it's a hard truth also. Um, very good film, a film that you can tell came from Spielberg's heart and was released, I think, the same year as Jurassic Park. So he has one huge blockbuster hit and one Oscar darling in the same year. Crazy to think that he could crank out two movies like that back to back or simultaneously. I don't even know, you know, how those uh, were produced as far as when they were shot versus when they were released. Serenity in a Steelbook. Um, this is the, the, the film that followed the series, the TV series Firefly, which we'll see in a little bit once we get to my TV box sets. Um, so Firefly was notoriously canceled, sci-fi show, kind of a sci-fi western, and then this movie kind of tries to cap off, you know, the way the show wasn't able to conclude, um, so we got a feature film about it. Um, so, yeah, why are there two discs in here? Oh, I guess this is a, a DVD and a Blu-ray set. So, yeah, I bought the Steelbook. It has these brown tones that kind of matches the brown of the TV show set that I own. Shape of Water, one of those movies that will probably be a movie that people think, oh, this one, Best Picture? I actually kind of enjoyed it. You know, I saw the movie before it won the Oscar and thought it was kind of weird, but Guillermo del Toro's films are kind of whimsical and the fantasy elements of this film just all kind of, they, they, they work for what he, as a filmmaker, produces. Uh, it's... Um, 
It's not a favorite of mine. Did it deserve Best Picture? I don't know. I don't remember what else was up against it that year, but you know, not going to be a favorite for everybody, but uh, some people thought it was really great. Uh, I thought it was okay. Here we have The Shining on 4K, and it's another one of those movies. If you haven't seen it, um, you got to see it at least once. It's a pretty long movie, Stanley Kubrick film. Um, gets referenced a lot, you know, the Here's Johnny thing and other elements of the film. Uh, notorious for being very different from the book that Stephen King wrote, but the film is just its own thing and the book is another thing entirely. They did a sequel to this called Dr. Sleep a couple years ago, maybe. I didn't enjoy that as much. I liked the idea of what they were doing, but uh, yeah, it wasn't really quite. And I watched the director's cut too, and I still like just couldn't quite get into it. So it's just The Shining for me. Oop. Come back to that one later. Spartacus on 4K. Film that uh, would be very similar to Gladiator. So if you're a fan of Gladiator, which we talked about earlier, then um, Spartacus would be a film that heavily influenced that movie. So we deal with Gladiators in this film. Uh, so Kirk Douglas in the lead role. I think Stanley Kubrick, yeah, actually directed this as well. So he did The Shining, but before he kind of became... Kubrick, the filmmaker that we know mainly, he, he did this kind of mainstream Hollywood epic, um, you know, as he was establishing himself. And it's a long movie with the intermission and all that, so it is uh, an epic film. Not one of my favorites, but good enough for me to own, and it looks really good on 4K. Spider-Man, the original trilogy uh, films from Sam Raimi on 4K. Digibook packaging, which looks good, but again, not my favorite way to store discs. And the biggest selling point in this one for me, aside from them being 4K, I already owned them on Blu-ray. Uh, but in this one, you get a different cut of the third movie called like the Editor's Cut or something like that. Yeah, Spider-Man 3, Editor's Cut, all new uh, uh, alternate version of the movie. I think it has like a different score and like some minor edits. So I actually haven't watched it that way, and it's not presented in 4K, it's just on their, uh, on a Blu-ray disc, but they mean to check that out. Kind of the main selling point of it, I think. Ooh, let me pick that, that one up. And then this Spider-Man continuation, as far as Spider-Man sequels or, or Spider-Man movies outside of the Raimi trilogy, this is the next best thing as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we had those two amazing Spider-Man movies that were like, I don't know. Again, I'm not really big into superhero movies, so I might just be, that's just my perspective. But this I actually really enjoyed. I love the animation of it. I didn't expect to enjoy it. I saw it first and really liked it and bought this. And it's just really good. Um, I don't know how it ties into how the comics work or if any of these characters are actually comic based. I mean, I think the one who's playing Spider-Man here is not Peter Parker. He's like a Hispanic version of him and sorry oh, oh miles morales so it's kind of confusing i guess there's different ver universes that have different uh you know they're not all peter parker but whatever it was a really uh i was i was pleasantly surprised by that film a film i didn't really expect to enjoy uh stephen king collection eight films in this and the one i dropped earlier let me make sure no discs fell out Okay, looks like we're okay. Um, so I have another Stephen King collection here, which something's up because the case isn't closing. Oh, I see what happened. Okay, I'll fix that later. Um, so we have these two sets. This first one is, so these are just collections of Stephen King adapted you know, films. This one's eight movies. I'm not gonna talk about them all, but it has Salem's Lot, which was a TV movie, The Shining, uh, which I guess I already own on 4K. Um, Creep Show anthology uh, movie. Cat's Eye, another anthology series, but a movie also. Um, it, the original It miniseries is on here. Shawshank Redemption, very good movie. Gotta be the best movie in this set. Um, you know, based on a very short Stephen King story, I think, but turned, you know, by filmmaker Frank Darabont into one of the best films ever, in my opinion. Then we have The Green Mile, very similar to Shawshank, another prison film. Not as good as Shawshank in my estimation, but uh, still a very powerful film. And then Dreamcatcher, maybe the weakest of the bunch. 
Don't know how the book is, but the movie version, although I liked it when I was younger, um, does not hold up all that great. Um, okay, here we go. And this next one is uh, five movies. More recent release. You get The Stand, the original TV miniseries, Pet Cemetery, the remake, Pet Cemetery, the original, The Dead Zone, and Silver Bullet. So, um, uh, the two Pet Cemetery movies, I like the original quite a bit. The remake was okay. Silver Bullet, werewolf movie, Dead Zone, kind of like a, not a psychic, but you know, he sees, uh, he sees things in his mind before they happen, I guess. The Stand is probably the most dated of, of them all. It's like a four-part miniseries. Um, pretty epic as far as the storytelling, but I think a lot of people, just like the original It miniseries, will think it's uh, pretty dated. Stand By Me. Interesting that I have three Stephen King things all next to each other. Um, directed by Rob Reiner and um, starring a young uh, River Phoenix and uh, Will Wheaton and Jerry O'Connell and uh, who's the one that is Corey Feldman, who's pretty well known for other reasons, but um, it's a very good film, very uh, touching, emotional film with these boys all traveling to to see a body, a dead body of a boy that they hear or a rumor of is like they're going to go try to find his body, I guess, and of course things happen in between. It's kind of like a road movie, except they're not in a car because they're little kids and. They just walk along the railroad tracks for a lot of it. Starship Troopers on 4K. I really like this movie. Paul Verhoeven um, he made uh, Robocop and uh, Total Recall, among other films. But this one is uh, his most outlandish, probably. I don't know, and cartoonish. I think I saw it when I was pretty young. And, you know, all I remembered then was, like, the shower scene with topless women. But... I uh, really like it now. Uh, it's just an interesting... Uh, <laughs> it's it's an over-the-top movie, trying to make statements about militarism and, and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know how most people would feel about this film. Some people might think it's too silly, but it uh, looks pretty good on 4K. I enjoy it quite a bit. Next we have the Star Trek trilogy of the newest Star Trek films called The Kelvin Timeline, I guess. Again, I'm a big Star Trek fan, although I'm not as geeky to understand why it's called Kelvin or what this alternate timeline necessarily uh, affects as far as um, diverging from the original series. But as far as the films, they're very enjoyable. The first one especially probably is what got me into Star Trek. Um, you know, I always knew what Star Trek was, but I don't think I ever really saw anything except some reruns of Next Generation on TV. And um, yeah, I saw the first Star Trek here and it, it, it uh, you know, sparked my interest in Star Trek and I've watched everything that there is of Star Trek up to this point, except the animated series, which actually is included in that box set that I mentioned at the beginning, but I don't think I mentioned that the animated series was in there. And I, I watched one season of Discovery, but never uh, continued with it. First film is really, really good, I think. Second film is loud and big, bigger on action, uh, which some people might prefer. Third one, uh, I don't know, hit or miss for me. And it's really unclear if they're going to continue with that same cast or not. It's a great cast. They cast people brilliantly to play those characters that actually resemble the original cast of Star Trek. Suspiria, Dario Argento film, released on 4K by Synapse Films. Looks beautiful. Um, so this is all part of uh, uh, an Italian, I don't know if it's strictly Italian, but uh, Giallo, is that how you say it, films? Um, just, a, you know, kind of like a murder story and they remade this i haven't watched the remake it's an amazon it's on amazon i think it's a prime original i believe and um but i like this one a lot uh, i don't know it may not cater to your taste it definitely has that italian flair but if you know dario Argento as a filmmaker then you'll know what to expect from suspiria and this girl who uh, goes to this dance academy and you know people are dying or at least one girl is dead and uh just strange things happening and witches involved and it, visually it's it's really beautiful and um, has an interesting score too. The Ten Commandments, a movie that plays a lot around Easter time. 
I used to see it on TV a lot. I think we used to own the VHS, maybe. Long movie, one of those epics. Um, I used to own it on Blu-ray, recently released on 4K, and I haven't actually watched it in 4K, but I imagine it's going to look magnificent because the Blu-ray even looked pretty stellar. So just haven't had a chance to watch that specific release yet. And um, I, I mentioned this just a little bit earlier, Paul Verhoeven film, Total Recall on 4K. Um, you know, it's a not quite a dream within a dream movie, but you kind of feel like maybe that's what's going on of a guy having kind of implanted memories and wondering if what he thinks is real is actually real or not. Good movie, a little cheesy at times. Um, and actually this 4K transfer falters uh, in some moments. There's like some weird pixelation. There's been some discussion about the transfer of this specific release, but it still looks quite good. I used to own the mind-bending edition Blu-ray and um, I would say this looks quite a bit better. Next up we have Tremors on 4K from Aero Video. They're just knocking it out of the park with these 4K releases and Tremors is a movie that I was excited beyond belief that they even put this out. Um, it's just a, a movie that at the time, you know, it was just like some worm monster movie, but it's so good. Uh, it really holds up. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't know. There's something special about this movie, and I guess that's why Arrow picked it up and released it. It's got a bunch of sequels. There's a whole franchise built on it now. Kevin Bacon was only ever in the first film, and I think that relationship between him and Fred Ward's character um, really is what, you know, helped, among other things, really strengthen this first film, and, and we lost that. Fred Ward was in the direct sequel, I think, and then, anyway, it's just a, it's, it's become like a direct-to-video franchise at this point. First one, so good. Unforgiven. If you're a Western fan, you probably already know what this is. Um, yeah, one best picture. Um, Clint Eastwood starring, Clint Eastwood directed it, and uh, I do like Westerns quite a bit. We've, I think, talked about some spaghetti westerns. This might be the first proper western um, as far as like the American West and made in the actual United States, but um, uh, I do like it a lot. It's not necessarily my favorite, um, but it's very dark and gritty. And uh, yeah, if you're a fan of westerns, like let's say John Wayne kind of westerns, this is definitely darker and more grim than kind of like your classic westerns. Jordan Peele's follow-up to Get Out, the film Us, uh, containing a lot of those same racial themes um, and uh, in a more apparent way, probably. Uh, but again, still an enjoyable film. I think, I think a lot of people were disappointed with this one. And honestly, it wasn't as, even for me, like as enjoyable as Get Out. But I knew there was something special about it, and re-watching it after I bought it, um, there's something here. There's something I think that, even though I don't understand it all, I think it's going to get reevaluated down the road. You know, the trailer made it look like just a home invasion movie, but those segments in the trailer were such a small part of the film. Kind of like the Inglorious Bastards trailer, like how that was just a small chapter of that whole movie. <clears throat> so it lent itself to some disappointment that way because the movie expands beyond that and does a whole switcheroo by the end that you're either on board with or you aren't. Vigilante, movie I never saw, read a good review about it of this 4K release and decided to buy it. And it was a very rewarding experience. It was uh, being compared to Death Wish, I think, with the review I was reading, kind of like a poor man's death, or not poor, like just like a, a blue collar Death Wish or something like that. So it's, a, it's just one of those movies where, oh, I've smeared the front now, um, where it, and it's got that cool lenticular cover on the front. Um, Somebody, you know, their family gets murdered and they go on revenge. Um, but uh, I don't know, something about it. The late Robert Forster in it, Fred Williamson, also kind of like a well-known B-movie actor. I don't know if that's the correct uh, thing to refer to him as, but it's a low-budget film and um, just a gritty revenge film. <clears throat> the Visitor. This is a really bonkers movie. I don't even know how to begin to describe it. The best you can do is look up the trailer and even then you're not going to know what's going on. But this was released by Draft House Films, so Alma Draft House, local theater chain that has expanded nationwide. Um, and then they released some movies 
on this line of uh, called Draft House Films, and this one just seems so weird and bonkers that uh, I decided to buy it, and um, I can't explain it. I really can't. I don't even know how it's explained on the back, but like someone that looks like Jesus is in it. I think it's Italian. The quote on the back says the Mount Everest of insane 70s Italian movies, so I don't know. It's just, it's weird. I can't spend time talking about it. Warm Bodies. I ordered this not realizing that, it, I mean, it has like another language on the spine and here, zombie, magre lou, whoever, I don't know if that's French or I probably shouldn't even guess. I'm just embarrassed myself. But um, yeah, this is one of those zombie movies that um, it's really basically just a Romeo and Juliet retelling in zombie form. So if that piques your interest, it's actually a pretty interesting concept. I give it a B plus. It's not it's not stellar, but unique for a genre that's really not very creative a lot of the time. Waterworld. I feel like I'd always seen parts of this on TV, and um, when it got a 4K release, I decided to buy it. It was on sale, I think. Um, you know, not a great movie. Known for being a really uh, disastrous box office bomb, especially compared against how expensive it was to make. But uh, I, I enjoy it. It looks pretty good on 4K. And um, unfortunately, there's no like special features. I mean, I feel like there'd be a ton of behind the scenes information about this movie. But if you haven't seen it, if you want a post-apocalyptic movie about how the world, how people on Earth survive, uh, you know, the polar ice caps melting due to climate change, that's, uh, that's what that movie's predicting or giving a glimpse of what that future could be like. Whiplash, blind buy for me. Um, I'm a musician and uh, the idea of, I'm not a jazz musician, um, but this story of a jazz drummer trying out for this group with a really intense uh, conductor, you know, leading the group, the band or whatever. Um, it's intense, that's all I can say. Um, you think it's gonna be just, I mean, you know it's gonna be intense, but uh, yeah, the the, the lead, or not the lead actor, but J.K. Simmons winning, I think he won, Best Supporting Actor, yeah, at the Academy Awards. He won it for a reason. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's very intense in the film, to say the least. The Wizard of Oz, um, on 4K, nice uh, shiny slip cover, and uh, this looks great, even though it's in the 4x3 aspect ratio, at least I think it is. I did watch it after I bought it, but the resolution is still there, looks great. Once we get into the color portion of the film, after the first, you know, 20 minutes or however long, uh, the colors really pop. An example of an old movie that looks great on these modern formats in 4K resolution with HDR color grading. This is a movie I feel like I shouldn't have to explain. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's a, it's a classic. You should check it out. X-Men Collection on Blu-ray. This is a cool set that, despite being another digibook packaging, just like a nice, really slim, saves space on the shelf, has the discs and a little more accessible kind of half concealed cardboard door. But we have all the, the first trilogy of films the, with The Last Stand, probably not being so great, but the first two really good. X-Men First Class, I enjoyed a lot, actually. Days of Future Past continued that excellence and then Apocalypse kind of ruined it, uh, in my opinion. And then um, there was a newer movie that I don't even remember what it was called. But for me, I felt like X-Men's kind of done. Uh, again, I'm not real big into superhero movies, so the fact that I even like all those or most of those is probably surprising. Zombie, another Lucio Fulci, Fu whoa. Can I say his name right? Lucio Fulci movie. Um, early on, we were talking about The Beyond. This is another one of his films. And I think people are generally more familiar with this one, at least in the States. Um, it was marketed overseas as like a direct sequel to Dawn of the Dead, George Romero's Dawn of the Dead, I believe. And they called it like Zombie 2 or something. Anyway, uh, this 4K release from Blue Underground is really good. They mess with the color timing. It looks, it looks good, but I feel like it doesn't look like how it looked in the uh, movie. If you wanna see a zombie film, Italian zombie movie, and there's a scene where a zombie fights a shark under the water. Kind of fights the shark. It's not an epic fight, but never seen a zombie underwater 
fighting a shark before, that's for sure. Now we're moving into, uh, this is my separate section of just Criterion uh, releases. So we've got The 400 Blows. This is a movie kind of up there with like eight and a half that I feel like is a little overhyped. I do enjoy this more, eight and a half. I saw after hearing about it for forever and was like, really? That's okay. Um, this is a little bit better. Uh, it, it, these are so subjective. I mean, some people probably think it's ridiculous that I don't understand the greatness of these films. Uh, but anyway, this is the first one in my Criterion collection. Pretty good. Here's one that's not even opened. If it's a more mainstream film, Silence of the Lambs. Seen it many times, haven't opened it because honestly, I'm afraid this is gonna come out any day, like on 4K, they're gonna announce it. Maybe even a whole collection of the Hannibal films, which would be great. Um, so I don't really need to open it to see it, and I do own it on DVD. But yeah, we'll see. I don't know if I'm ever gonna pop this open. I'm not really sure why I bought it in the first place. It's probably on sale. Diabolique, great uh, film, uh, foreign language film. But, um, and black and white, so you have those two strikes against it if you don't like those types of movies. But the story is really good. It has a nice, nice twist at the end. Um, and uh, also influenced Alfred Hitchcock with Psycho. Um, it's basically um, a murder mystery. Um, two women, like, getting together, and, um, you know, they, they've murdered one of the women's husband and are trying to get rid of the, the or, or, or cover the evidence of the murder. It's, it's good. It's really good. I don't know how I saw that for the first time, but that's one of those movies that like you discover and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so thankful that somehow I came across that film. Yojimbo, another black and white film. Um, this movie is basically remade. Um, this is Akira Kurosawa, is the director, and if you've seen uh, Fistful of Dollars, it's basically beat for beat this same story. It's a remake of this. So not to detract from a, from a Fistful of Dollars because it does it quite well, remaking and retelling the story in a Western setting. This is the original in a samurai setting. Uh, you're either in or you're, you're out of these kind of movies. Uh, I'm in on that one, although I, I've shamefully not seen a lot of Akira Kurosawa films. Uh, Bicycle Thieves, a movie I heard of a, a lot and finally saw, and I actually liked it, you know? I felt like it lived up to the hype. Um, a sweet but also devastating story of a guy who's, uh, you know, he's trying to find work and uh, he needs a bicycle. His bicycle gets stolen and so he can't do the job anymore and him and his son are trying to find who stole the bike and it sounds really like a simplified story but um, the father-son dynamic in it is, is, is really touching and uh, the performance of the son, the character actor who plays the son is really good. Um, Ace in the Hole, Kirk Douglas movie, uh, very uh, prescient and uh, topical when you're talking about journalism. Even back then, you know, journalists hungry to cover a story and sometimes willing to do whatever they can and even manipulate the, the, the circumstances of an event just to get, uh, you know, to get the story. Not to say that journalists do that across the board. I'm not a fake news guy or whatever, but, um, and I studied journalism in school, so I have uh, very much uh, respect for the integrity of, of, of good journalists. The character that Kirk Douglas plays in this one is not uh, such uh, a journalist. Another Kirk Douglas movie, Back to Back, Paths of Glory, a Stanley Kubrick film, one of his early films, again, kind of always set aside from the core films that people associate him with, like The Shining and A Clockwork Orange and... Um, yeah, this is a good war film. Devastating war film, black and white. I haven't seen it in a long time and I actually haven't even opened this case. So I can't really talk about this one too much. Although I know that it stuck with me and um, it's really beautiful even though it's a black and white film. Sweet Smell of Success. Um, this is a film that I don't know how I ever heard of it, but it's actually pretty good. Um, hard for me to really describe what this story is about either, but you basically have someone who's like a, a famous uh, kind of newspaper journal, or he writes, you know, he writes a part, an article, an opinion piece probably in a newspaper, and then he's got a guy who really like is brown nosing him the whole time and trying to be his assistant or, you know, get in with him and there's just all the shenanigans going on with the, the author's girlfriend is dating a musician and, you know, he tells the guy, if you can screw up that relationship, I'll, you know, make things 
good for you and you know anyway he's chasing success uh, obviously and of course you know things probably don't go quite as planned blowout a remake of the film blow up and i saw this film first uh this is made this, or this was directed by brian de palma and i loved it i was like wow this film is really good basically about a guy who works in the film industry. This is another one of those kind of subtly like movies about movies. So he's in the film industry. He needs to capture a sound uh, of, of a girl screaming to insert into this slasher movie they're making. And so he's out there record, trying to record all these different sounds and stuff. And he accidentally stumbles upon an assassination and he captures, you know, he's got the audio recording of it and he's able to analyze it and determine that what sounds like a tire blowing out is actually a gunshot. And so informs that it's actually an assassination and not a, uh, a car accident, as people initially believe. The original film, Blow Up, I was really disappointed. It's just one of those films I don't get. And instead of audio, it's about a picture, about someone taking a picture and discovering a body in the picture. And he blows it up and thinks he can put together how this murder happened, which sounded really intriguing. But boy, I thought it was really boring. And uh, I prefer Blow Out much, much more. The Killing, another Stanley Kubrick film, not one that you will hear talked about in his main uh, collection of films, um, but he uh, directed this, uh, uh, I don't know, it's not really a heist movie, but I guess it is. Um, you know, they're trying to rob uh, a, 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 a racetrack, it's either dogs or horses, but some kind of racetrack. And of course, things don't go according to plan. There's all sorts of issues. And uh, there's even a second film in here that's like an early film that Kubrick did. So you get two for one in this Criterion release of The Killing. I'd recommend it. It's in black and white, but uh, still a very good film. We have here next, 12 Angry Men, a film I haven't seen since uh, high school. I'm gonna say sophomore year, maybe. We watched it, perhaps. Uh, I don't remember why we were watching it or what class it was, but I remember liking it and uh, bought it, but I haven't actually opened it and watched it. But it's about the jury process and about how, um, you know, maybe a jury is quick to convict somebody based on what seems like uh, clear evidence, but there's the one guy who doesn't think that, uh, you know, or who thinks they should spend more time talking about it at least. Again, I haven't seen it in a long time, but definitely seems uh, relevant to, I mean, we still have juries and courts all the time, and, you know, you need to make sure that the jury on the court needs to uh, really thoroughly uh, observe all the ed evidence and make the proper uh, decision. So it's kind of about one guy trying to turn everyone else uh, around in their thinking. Uh, Godzilla, the only, one of the only Godzilla movies I like. The original, black and white. Um, this is a great film. It's a nice kaiju film. It's not even a guy in a suit really, I don't think. I mean, it is sometimes, but it's also like that claymation kind of, or whatever the original King Kong was. That kind of Ray Harryhausen style. So I like this one a lot. And then I really don't like any Godzilla movies until we get to the Millennium series, which if you're a Godzilla fan, you'll know what I'm talking about. I just really, I'm sorry, I've tried guys, but I can't, uh, I can't get into the Godzilla movies. They're, they're just, I don't know. I can't explain it. I really wish I could enjoy them because I'd like to, and I've tried. The Game, David Fincher film, film he made between, I might have this wrong, but he made Seven, he made Fight Club, and I want to say he made this in between those two, but I could be wrong about that. Um, one of his lesser known films about a guy who, you know, signs up for, um, people are supposed to, you know, play a prank on him kind of, but he's not, not he's not going to know when it is. Um, and then things start happening, and then the question is, is this the prank, or is it actually real? Is it a con? Um, to, it, it's wild, and it's got a, an ending that is a good twist ending, but yeah, you might, it might stretch uh, credibility a little bit as far as whether it's believable. Rosemary's Baby, I love this movie, and I love the book, and what I love about both of these is that this adaptation is so faithful to the book that um, I saw the movie first, and then I read the book, and... Um, it was like I could picture everything in the movie in the book, uh, which is sometimes not what you want to do. You want to use your imagination, but I couldn't help picturing the characters since I saw the film first. Uh, but it's so, so faithful to the book. You know, a woman gets pregnant and she thinks that 
Um, well, she doesn't know what's going on, but she definitely feels like something's wrong. And then she starts to suspect that her neighbors who've been helping her take care of the baby and seem really interested in the baby are a coven of witches. And, you know, why would they be so interested in the birth of her child? Hmm. On the Waterfront, an Ilya Kazan movie. Um, and this one is, uh, you know, one of those considered classics, Marlon Brando classic. Um, kind of about union workers, uh, has a little bit less impact today, at least uh, for me. I mean, I don't know if, you know, union rules are the same or have changed, but um, kind of deals with that topic and um, kind of the corruption of unions, at least at this time and in this uh, uh, setting where they're working on like a, in a port or a harbor or something like that. Good movie. Um, a little hard for me to explain because I, I haven't watched it in a while. I don't remember all the details, but Really good performance from Marlon Brando. Um, he's got that whole contender speech that it's known for. You know, I could have been a contender. Um, yeah, there you go. Watch it for that. Uh, the Devil's Backbone. Probably my favorite Guillermo del Toro movie. Don't know how I stumbled across this, but so, so glad I did. Great ghost story um, about uh, kids in an orphanage, and there's an orphan that had died previously, and um, figuring out the circumstances of his death, I guess, and um, it's just a beautiful film story-wise and the way it's shot. Uh, I think it's probably my favorite of his, um, even though it's one of his earlier films. Thief, a movie I'd heard of and hadn't seen for a while. Just decided to buy it. It was on sale. I like it a lot. Um, it looks really good. It's an early Michael Mann film. He went on to direct uh, things like Heat. Uh, it was one of his better-known films, uh, Last of the Mohicans. Uh, collateral. Anyway, he's the guy that made this. Stars James Can as like this professional thief. And um, again, I haven't seen this in a while, but I guess he gets hired to, you know, on this big score. You know, it's always that story of like, hey, can you break into this super complicated safe? And, uh, you know, there might be some double crossing and stuff along the way. The Graduate. Uh, another one of those kind of classic films. Not necessarily a favorite of mine, but. Um, it's 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 interesting um it's got a good score um or songs original songs i mean the soundtrack is by simon and garfunkel and just about a guy that is kind of lost in his stage of life i think he's about to go to college so he's kind of young and then he meets this woman miss robinson so you probably heard the simon and garfunkel song um and uh starts an affair with her but then later like falls in love with her daughter and it's a it's an interesting film. May not be to everyone's taste, but it's in my collection. Night of the Living Dead. Now here's a movie I do love. Uh, George Romero classic, kind of considered the beginning of the zombie uh, movies. It's probably my favorite of his films. People generally say Dawn of the Dead. I like this one a lot. It almost feels more timeless. Like Dawn to me is very dated. I want to say very dated, but it has that 70s look to it. And because this was shot in black and white, like it looks old, but it looks like that kind of timeless black and white. Um, just about people stuck in a farmhouse and defending themselves against the living dead. The brutal ending um, that is great, I think. Um, great way to end a film. I wish more films had the balls to, to do an ending like that. Actually, I actually haven't opened it, but I've seen the film so many times. Bill Durham, Bull Durham, another film I haven't actually opened but I've seen it and one of those baseball movies that I like even though I don't care about baseball um, and uh, I only saw it once so I'm not super clear on the on rehashing the plot but kind of a romance and kind of a love triangle between um, Kevin Costner and Susan Sarandon and Tim Robbins um, where she clearly likes Kevin Costner more but she's in a relationship with Tim Robbins he's and they're all or the, the two men are on a baseball team and uh, I, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I'd probably stack that above Field of Dreams even as far as the Kevin Costner baseball trilogy films of his. A Face in the Crowd. If you want to see, um, yeah, who's this? Anth uh, An Andy Griffith. If you want to see him in a role unlike any other that he's ever played, just the story of a guy that is just a, a drunk. Um, I think he's in a jail cell when we first meet him, but he can sing a tune and play the guitar and he becomes famous and of course fame gets to him and he becomes really conceited and gets a big head and uh, it's a rise that is destined to have a fall let's say the great escape film that i've seen 
or I think that I own already on like another Blu-ray, but this is the Criterion edition, and so it's supposed to have a better transfer and uh, more special features. Just a prison movie starring Steve McQueen. Um, not just a prison movie, but a prison escape movie. So um, if you like that kind of uh, film, uh, this is one of those, and uh, pretty good. It's known for that classic uh, scene of Steve McQueen going over the fence with a motorcycle. Spoiler, they escape. Um, War of the Worlds, not the original, well, it's hard to know. <laughs> I feel like there's been so many of these. Um, the original film, I think, so there's like the radio, um, the original radio play, and then maybe this is the first movie adaptation. Either way, um, I'd never seen it before. I decided to check it out when Criterion released it. It's a relatively new release, and I liked it. I mean, it's dated, but it has that kind of 50s um, era uh, style that I associate with like early UFO movies. So for me, it works. Um, might be hit or miss for people that don't like older films. Uh, and that brings us to the end of the movies. We'll quickly do um, box sets and TV shows. And, uh, and then there's still DVDs after that. And just like that, we have traveled into the future. It is now the next day. I was not able to finish this video on the first attempt. It's taken longer than I expected, probably because I've been talking too much about each title. So I'm going to try to speed things up now on this final stretch and try to keep this video under three hours. So we're into... Uh, TVs and box sets now. This is going to start out alphabetically and then I think it kind of uh, goes out of order as we move along. But anyway, uh, we're going to start with Battlestar Galactica, a really great uh, sci-fi show that aired originally on the Sci-Fi Network. If you're a Star Trek fan uh, like me, and especially um, if you're a DS9 fan, I think this show kind of follows that dark, gritty sci-fi formula. If you're not coming from a Star Trek background, then this is basically a military uh, show in space with a lot of human drama uh, in it too. Great show, one of my absolute favorites. Probably my top four shows of all time. Batman, the complete animated series. Um, this is a show that I watched as a kid growing up. There's also a Superman uh, cartoon similar to this that hopefully they, they release at some point soon. But yeah, this is just the simple it's got two Blu-ray cases in there. There was some limited edition packaging when it first came out. Um, if you're a Batman fan, some people say that's the purest uh, adapted uh, Batman, you know, from the comics. Uh, all right, moving on to Firefly in this really cool packaging. It came out on Blu-ray uh, previously, and I think these are the same discs and the same content, but they repackaged it, and, you know, it almost looks like a leather-bound uh, kind of style. And then this top part comes off. And uh, it's, just, it's just much nicer packaging. Again, I think the contents are the same. Uh, you've got all sorts of like the lobby cards and a poster in the back here, it looks like. I've never gone into that stuff. And then just a really nice um, fold out. Uh, you know, it's got, it's not a digibook, but it's got them, you know, in cardboard sleeves. Just really good looking visually, so. I didn't own the show before. Glad I had the opportunity to buy it like this. For the show itself, um, it's one of those shows that's famous for being canceled uh, too soon and um, you know became really popular after the fact. And then there's a movie called Firefly that kind of caps off the show since it wasn't able to resolve on its own before it got canceled. Essentially, I would describe the show as a Western in space. It's from Joss Whedon, so it has his uh, type of humor in it. Here's a show that I can't say much about because I have not opened it or ever watched it before. I was kind of on a, a Jim Henson kick there when I was watching, you know, Dark Crystal and Labyrinth for the first time. And, you know, this came out, had this kind of cool packaging. Thought I would show it to my kids one day, but I haven't even watched it myself. So uh, I don't know what it would be like. Something like Sesame Streets or Muppets, maybe. It was on sale, and so I bought it. Who knows if I'll <laughs> really ever get to watch it. Uh, moving on to uh, Life. This is, I think, the series that maybe came out after the first Planet Earth, which I was a big fan of, you know, back when it came out. I was maybe in college and, um, you know, moved on to uh, the show Life. After that, very similar nature documentary with David Attenborough narrating it, just like Planet Earth. Uh, Looney Tunes comes in this digibook packaging, um, and they released two seasons, at, well, not seasons, but two collections after this. This is volume one, um, and, uh, yeah, it just has some, 
uh, text and pictures and stuff inside. But you know, even though it's a digital book, it's got the discs in trays, which is much more secure. So I like that. Um, the other two volumes are just standard Blu-ray cases. So I just bought the first one because it has the Digibook packaging. Here's the original uh, Planet Earth. So at this point, I guess I had Planet Earth 2 on 4K and then Life. And then this kind of rounds out, even though it's the original uh, nature documentary, uh, kind of of that type in that series, Planet Earth. Um, has a hard cover here, but then it's just kind of like a standard Blu-ray case inside of it. They released this in the States with like Oprah Winfrey, like as an alternate narrator instead of David Attenborough. If you're gonna get this, make sure you get the original, unless you're a huge Oprah Winfrey fan and wanna hear her narrate it, but it was originally not uh, seen that way. Here is, um, this is not a TV show, but it's, now we're getting into kind of box sets, I guess. Um, this is uh, the Planet of the Apes. So all of the original Planet of the Apes films uh, which I, I like a lot. So I guess we have, what do we have? Uh, is there an easy way to tell? You know, for being a fan, I should have a better understanding of what movies we have in here. But yeah, there's the original films on Blu-ray. But what's interesting about this set, so it's, it's, it's in this type of uh, packaging. So we've got the original Planet of the Apes, very good. Beneath the Planet of the Apes, kind of a rehash of the first one. Um, not as good, but has a different kind of uh, third act. Escape from the Planet of the Apes, which I actually enjoy. Uh, it's kind of adds comedy to the series. Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, throws the comedy out the window and gets super dark. Battle for the Planet of the Apes, the epic finale, but not epic at all. And, you know, probably the worst movie of, of all of these. Is it the worst or is Tim Burton's remake of the worst? I had actually never seen that one until buying this set, but all the other ones I had already seen and was a fan of. And then what's cool about this is those were all on Blu-ray, but then when you get into these final films, you get the 4K and the Blu-ray discs for Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Dawn, and War uh, for the Planet of the Apes. So really nice to have those final three uh, on 4K and the most recent trilogy of films, the rebooted series, just amazing, I think. Maybe that's what got me to even look into uh, Planet of the Apes, the original films in the first place. So I like them all to a certain degree. Um, now we're moving into Star Trek territory. This is the box set for The Next Generation, the complete series. They were all released individually at first and then they came out in these big, thick, epic cases. Or uh, they're, they're called something like that. Um, seasons one through four, seasons five through seven. Um, you know, if you're a fan of Star Trek, this might be your favorite show. For me, uh, Deep Space Nine is probably my favorite. I don't have that though. It's only been out on DVD, not Blu-ray yet. The Twilight Zone, one of my very favorite shows. Um, you know, most of the episodes are great. There's a few that are, are, are not, and some that are just bad. I think it even ends on a pretty awful episode, if I remember correctly. I haven't watched this in a while, but I've probably watched this whole show through twice in my lifetime, and it's just great. I love this, I love this series, and I haven't watched the any of the reboots. They did an 80s one, a 90s one, and then one on uh, that Jordan Peele did, which sounded interesting, but I think they just canceled it. Anyway, the original is awesome, it's great. Uh, jumping back to movies, this is a, a box set of uh, the Universal Classic Monsters, which has been released in different forms. I previously owned just the eight film one, which is kind of the core, the eight films that they usually release together. This one is a 30 film collection. And so you have them sorted by the monster. So like the first one's Dracula, Frankenstein, Mummy, Invisible Man, Wolfman, Phantom of the Opera, and a creature from the Black Lagoon. But it has all their sequels and stuff in there too. So all together you get 30 films. There's a nice listing on the back uh, that, so you can keep track of all of them. And then there's a handy booklet, which is not in here, but I think is in my closet still, which uh, actually puts them in order chronologically, which I think is the way I watched them all through the first time. Critters, movies I'd heard of, but never watched until recently. This box set went on sale like under $30. So I went for it. It's four films. First two are good. The second two are not good. I think that's pretty much the consensus on these films, but I enjoyed the first two more than I expected to. It was definitely a blind buy for me. And um, if you're gonna compare it to Gremlins, it's not really like that. But um, if you like Gremlins, maybe it's worth giving that one a shot. Here is uh, the Fly collection, similar box set from Scream Factory as well. All the films on individual releases. So in this one we get five films. The original The Fly with Vincent Price in it. He's also in the sequel, Return of the Fly. 
first one's in color, the second one's black and white, the third one's black and white, and the third one's just weird because it's called Curse of the Fly, but it actually kind of doesn't follow the storyline of the first two at all. And as far as I recall, there's not even a fly in it. It's more of a mutant movie. It's weird. Uh, it's interesting on its own, but just doesn't really fit in with the rest of the films. Then you have the remake, David Cronenberg's uh, The Fly from 1986, I believe, which is great. And uh, then The Fly 2, which I actually still uh, enjoy quite a bit. Some people may not like it. It certainly doesn't compare to Cronenberg's remake, but it's still quite good. Um, well, I won't say good, but it's entertaining. Uh, all right, here's a big one. Friday the 13th, um, this rounds out the Scream Factory. Oh no, I still got a couple more boxes from them. They've, these are the only boxes they've put out, I think, and I've bought all of them at this point. Um, so yeah, just all the Friday the 13th movies, and, and by I mean all of them. There's another one that you can buy that's like an eight film collection, and I think there might be a rights issue between you know New Line and Paramount, and you know, which movies belong to which studio, I don't really know. But this one has all of them. Um, it's on sale now for like 100 bucks on Amazon. Um, so I got this for like 110 and it was like 150 when it was first listed. So a steal at $100. It's a big box, every movie in its individual case, which you may or may not like. I don't like that it takes up so much shelf space, but uh, some people do appreciate the individual uh, cases and the artwork is just really cool. Um, I don't know if I gave a good view of that. Got the mask on top. Um, interesting artwork. I didn't think I liked it at first, but I've come around to it. I'm so used to it always just being black, white, and red. Typically, here's another box set, the Omen collection. So this one has four, five films. So I've only seen four of them. There's the original with uh, Gregory Peck, which is great. Uh, the sequel, not so good. The third one, even less good. Uh, this isn't a very strong franchise in my opinion. Um, so the first three are, are or the first one's great. The, the second two are, you know, you might have a favorite between the two. Um, then there's this fourth one that I haven't watched yet called The Final Awakening, which I think has a girl instead of a guy uh, as the evil child or, um, you know, the Antichrist. And then you have the remake from 2006, which is also not very good, I don't think. But I like that they have them all in one box now. Here's probably my favorite set of movies from these box sets as far as, um, well, you know, it's kind of mixed quality in here too, but I just adore the first one and even the second one so much. These are like the best of the found footage movies in my opinion. Um, they are Spanish language, so you'll have to watch them that way or you can have them English dubbed. I wouldn't recommend it. Just read the subtitles. Um, but yeah, you have Wreck, the original, Wreck 2, and then Wreck 3, people didn't really like it. Um, and it does do a weird thing where it stops being found footage, you know, at some point during the film and just becomes a normal movie, but I actually quite liked it. The fourth one, Wreck uh, Apocalypse, is really the only one that's not very good as far as I'm concerned. Um, pretty uh, disappointing end to the franchise, but the first one, great. And the second one, some people like that even better. Okay, so these last two are TV box sets, and these are like the most elaborate, you know, box sets I own. So. Dexter, the complete season. I've been watch or complete season, the complete series. Me and my wife have been going through this. We've seen the show before, but because they're doing the Dexter miniseries or additional season that's coming out this fall, we decided to watch it through again so we could catch up and, uh, uh, you know, be all up to speed with that miniseries or whatever that's coming out. This is like, you know, his box. It's a lot bigger than, and it has to be because it holds all these discs, but it kind of looks like his blood slide box and all the, all the discs come out and have um, the gray on the front, but then the red on the back. I wish they just made the discs red, um, you know, so that it would look like a drop of blood. This is just great packaging. And it even has, it's not actually wood, although it kind of looks like it could be. It's very uh, convincing from a distance, but the, the latches here are actually metal and the hinges. So this is a really uh, awesome pack. And, and going through the show again, I'm realizing I don't hate it as much uh, as I did those final seasons. First four seasons are great. Season five is still pretty good. Six is where I remember it, you know, dropping in quality and, and it certainly does. But then seven kind of rebounds and we're about to start going into eight, which again, I remember the final season just being a disaster, which I think is what they're trying to fix with this new mini series or whatever they're doing. Um, this one's probably the most elaborate though, this lost box set. I generally say this is my favorite show, even though I not know the quality is not necessarily the best. It's a flawed series, but it just holds a special place for me because 
it was like the first show that I really got into. So yeah, they released it in this epic box that's kind of like, it's not quite a temple, but you know, it kind of looks like something like that. And the quality just, uh, it, it feels great like to touch. There's all sorts of textures and stuff on top of it. And then like the top comes off and you get a map of the island in there. I think this actually comes out somehow. There's a bonus disc that I've actually never been able to access in here. Um, then you've got uh, this game in here. That's actually kind of hard to get into. Uh, I don't know, it's just, it just comes with bonus stuff. There's this game that they play in the show that uh, you can play on here. And then in uh, the actual show itself, come in these kind of interesting cardboard slips. I'll just pull one out to show, for example, but, ooh, almost slid out, but uh, again, I don't really like when they're putting cardboard sleeves, but it holds them pretty well. They seem pretty well protected and just there's a lot of opportunity for cool artwork on each season when you package them this way. So, cool, cool box set, and now let's just fly through the DVDs I have and then we'll be done. So here we go with my first DVD. Um, you know, these are just movies that I've, you know, held on to just because I either like the packaging or something about them. I don't really pop these DVDs in anymore, but here's The Departed in this cool steel book that has uh, my preferred art. I remember when the movie came out, um, they had that gun kind of thing on the front. Cool steel book that I probably paid way too much for. Going on with steel books, we have this movie called Dog Soldiers. This is from the same director who did The Descent um, after this, I guess. I can't remember his name right now. Neil Marshall, he's been doing not great stuff since The Descent, really, but um, if you, well, even if you like The Descent, this doesn't really, isn't a similar film. It's a werewolf movie, so if you blend like the military, military exercise with werewolves, that's what you get here. It's just a nuts movie, um, I love it. Get Shorty, uh, just a movie that I like, a movie about movies. Um, they tried to do a sequel to this called Be Cool that I don't think was nearly as successful, but um, this first one is pretty fun. Comes in this two disc collector set. Uh, Gladiator, the extended edition. I think you get both the theatrical cut and the extended version on the 4K that I already own, so I really don't have any reason to own this other than just the cool packaging. This is back when DVDs used to fold out and just, I don't know, it's got a lot of, a lot of discs on there, a lot of cool artwork. This, uh, I paid you know, too much for this probably when I bought it and it's worth nothing now, so why not hold on to it? That's the story for a lot of these DVDs. Um, Hannibal Lecter collection. This is how I discovered the film Manhunter. So um, they remade that film as Red Dragon years later, uh, but I actually like Manhunter quite a bit and some people debate whether uh, it, which one is superior. Um, the other films are Silence of the Lambs and Hannibal. All right, here's Apocalypse Now, which I have on that cool 4K set, but this is also a cool set. Um, it's called the Dossier Edition or something like that. So it's got like this little red stamp, like a wax stamp, and then you get the theatrical and the Redux cut. Anyway, I just like how it's packaged. Speaking of packaging, I'm not gonna open this one because I know that it's a mess inside, but the film is Memento from uh, Christopher Nolan, and this just kind of looks like the character's uh, file, uh, you know, his, uh, the profile on him, I guess. I, th I like the packaging, and the film is great. A movie that messes with chronology and jumps back and forth from the present past and all that. Independence Day. Um, I already own this on 4K, I guess. I just love the art, like, on this kind of stuff. Um, so that's why I hold on to these. This is a nice DVD set, but again, I'm not gonna pop in the DVD when I have the 4K. Jaws, I already own Jaws on 4K now, but this is how I first owned it on the 30th anniversary DVD. Ooh, The Omen. So I had that Omen collection. This is the first way I saw The Omen in this uh, Steelbook set, two disc set. And here we have Punch Drunk Love from Paul Thomas Anderson, uh, starring Adam Sandler and maybe what was his first kind of dramatic role. He's done a few more since then. But um, yeah, just a cool set. A movie that uh, is not entirely enjoyable, but has its moments. Uh, Raging Bull. 
a really great uh, Scorsese film starring Robert De Niro as a boxer. Just a really good looking DVD set. Uh, here's a film that maybe isn't as well known. Ronin, another De Niro film. Um, really interesting. If you're into action, um, kind of, it's not espionage, but I guess these guys are, you know, hired guns type of hired to do a job kind of story. That's what you have here. Uh, it's pretty underrated. I don't think many people know about it. I don't even know how I found out about it, but I'm glad I did. Royal Tenenbaums. I'm not a huge Wes Anderson fan, but this is the, is this the Criterion? Yeah. Back when they were doing just DVDs. I don't know. I guess I liked that it kind of looks like it's a, it's supposed to look like it's a VHS tape or something. So I have that. Here's one that is kind of random. Saw 3. I bought this because it's the only way I could have the theatrical cut, which I always thought was the superior cut, um, which is strange because if you're into Saw movies, you think you like the violence and you want more of it. But um, I thought the theatrical cut was more tasteful, didn't dwell on some of the violence that was just too excessive and over the top in some cases, like laughably so. Anyway, so I have the theatrical cut in full screen, which looks awful, but I don't know why I bought that exactly. Schindler's List. Um, ooh, comes in this uh, kind of cool book that opens up and then, gosh, it's got that flipper disc. Remember those? You flip it on one side and it's got, you know, special features and flip it on the other side. That's what I'm working with there. Um, I feel like I've skipped. Let me pull this one out. So these are the ones that I have like outward facing so you can look at them. Here's the on my shelf. So Nightmare Before Christmas. Just got this cool 3D thing and then I actually stuck the Blu-ray in there. So I actually have my Blu-ray inside for this film. Another one that's kind of similar and, and sticking with Saw. Well, I guess we skipped Saw, but coming back to it, this is the Saw Trilogy Collection. Another cool 3D uh, uh, face in there. And um, this has the first three films, which can be treated as a trilogy if you want it in there. What's nice about this set is... Uh, that Saw 3 is the director's cut, and you can only own the director's cut on DVD, so that's why I have it. It's not necessarily my preferred cut, but um, it's there in that collection, and you can buy it separately. But again, only on DVD. 7 was my favorite movie for a long time, and this uh, edition like looks like the books that the villain in the movie writes. If you haven't seen 7, I mean, it's so good. It's so good. It's been emulated so many times that it probably doesn't seem as original if you've never seen it, but... Um, just a good crime thriller uh, from David Fincher. How oh, we doing on time? Let's see. Sin City, the recut, ex extended, unrated edition. So on DVD still. I don't watch it this way, but it does come with a graphic novel of, I think, one of the stories, The Hard Goodbye. So it's got that little book in there, which is nice. Another movie that was filmed by Robert Rodriguez here uh, at his studios in Austin. The Sting, this movie just came out recently on 4K. If it gets cheap enough, I'll probably buy it, but I like this packaging. It's kind of a, a like it looks like a classy kind of book. Um, two discs there. If you're a fan of uh, Paul Newman and Robert Redford's pairings, you know, in films together, so they did uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid before that, you might try checking out The Sting. Uh, different movie entirely, but they work well together. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original, and it comes in this steel book from Dark Sky Films. I'll probably hold on to this forever because it just looks so gritty, the packaging and the movie itself, that you can actually watch it on DVD and it still looks good because it's supposed to look really gritty. Titanic, movie that I was obsessed with in middle school and actually became really obsessed with like the actual story of the Titanic and stuff. But yeah, there's like this epic uh, three disc set that I bought and paid who knows how much for back in the DVD days. I feel like movies are cheaper now on 4K than they were just with DVD. Taxi Driver. This little interesting thing comes out and then it opens up. I really like this movie quite a bit. It's not a pleasant movie, but uh, probably one of my favorite uh, Scorsese films and it's being released in the Columbia Classics Volume 2 that's coming out, but I hope they give it an individual release so I can just buy it on its own. Unbreakable, a M. Night Shyamalan film that was given a sequel with the movie Split. If you haven't seen that, it's a bit of a spoiler. And then they fulfilled uh, or completed a trilogy, the Unplanned Trilogy, based on this first film, I guess. 
with glass. It's a good uh, superhero movie from a guy that doesn't like superhero movies. Okay, right here at the end, I'm just gonna go through these real quick. It's just my Simpsons collection. I'm a huge Simpsons fan. So we've got uh, the first season, and they're all pretty much the same, but I'll just go through them. Season two. Season three. Um, yeah, I love the original. You know, people talk about, you know, what seasons were the best. At this point, I've watched basically every season. They're like into season 31 or 32 now. Season four. Um, and it really just got better and better up through, you know, here, season five. And then... Uh, or that was six, I guess. Somehow I've skipped five and I'm on to seven. Um, eight, nine. This takes up a lot of shelf space, guys. Um, 10. And that's really where I probably say that the show ends being like its funniest. And then for some reason I skipped to season 14 um, because uh, I think it was just on sale for like 10 bucks. But they did change the packaging up, and even though it's a pain to get the discs out, look at this beautiful, I mean, artwork that they, they put some real work into this. And I think it's beautiful. Psh, do some gymnastics here to show y'all, uh, to look at. But very, very difficult. This accordion-style packaging um, to get the, the discs out. But fortunately, I don't find season 14 all that funny, so... I don't need to. Ah, I know why we got off count, because season six I have, again, this is one of those front-facing things uh, on my shelf. They did this little clamshell packaging. Um, they did it for several seasons, but I just bought it for one. I didn't need many of these, because I don't really like, uh, it's a little flimsy, but got the one season six with Homer's head. And now these last ones are real random. <laughs> to close this video out, uh, Gumby, a show that I somehow watched a lot as a kid. I don't know how I saw the show. I mean, the show aired like in the 60s. I guess it was on TV or maybe on VHS, but um, what is this one? This is the 60s, 60s, 50s. It starts with the 50s. So I don't know if these are really seasons exactly, but each one has a little collectible. So we got Gumby in there. This one has Pokey. So this one's from the 60s, I think. And... Um, this one's also from the 60s. So they're just called Volume. Volume, well, there's the Complete 50s series, then there's Volume 1, and there's Volume 2. And this has the blockheads in it. And then, I'd never seen this, but, you know, it's something I can put on the shelf. Gumby's head, um, right next to Homer Simpson. And it's got um, the movie, which I didn't even really know existed for a long time. It's a... It's a trippy movie. The first time I saw it, I was just like, whoa. Um, the whole show's kind of trippy, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, it's a weird way to end this video, I suppose. But Gumby, if you're a Gumby fan, there's some, there's some good Gumby stuff out there. Oh my gosh, thank you guys for watching so much. Uh, I hope, again, the point of this video was not to show off my collection. It's really not that large, uh, but the video did take quite a bit longer just because I did way too much talking, probably, about each film. And so thank you so much if you've stuck with me here till the end. I hope you found some movies that you're either reminded that you need to watch or hopefully even films that you've never heard of that you're going to check out. That's the whole purpose of showing you this collection and really the purpose behind this channel. So again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.